What's going on, guys? Today's show is brought to you by the Performance Package 4.0 from Manscaped. Summer is coming, and our friends at Manscaped just launched their fourth generation performance package, which includes the Lawnmower 4.0 to complement your physique with a trim from the leaders and male grooming. Summer's coming. Join the 2 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped and get ready for summer by going to manscaped.com for 20% off and free shipping using code RBP. What's up, Ian? How much? How's with you? How are you, man? Good. Feel good today. Feeling better than yesterday? Yeah, I got a good sleep last night. I don't know what it was yesterday. Like, I, I woke up in the morning and I felt like okay at first. And like, I did my morning cardio and then just like, yeah, after fucking, it was an off training day too. And I just like felt like, fuck, I don't know, man. Like, you know, one of those days where you just want to be silent, you know? Yeah. yeah. Like, where people talk to you and you like don't even want to respond to it. You just want to sit there like this. Like, you know, like I didn't, I didn't want to speak. I didn't want to speak. I didn't want to move. I just like, I don't know what it was. Like I just felt fucking off and I was anxious and just like, you know, it was just one of those days, but I got a really good sleep. I was in bed by like midnight last night. I got a good sleep. So feel good today. Aren't you like three weeks out now? Uh, yeah. Three and a half. Exactly. Today. Yeah. yeah I mean, that sounds about right. Did you, yeah. let me ask you this. I don't know if you can divulge this information, but do you increase your antiestrogens as you get closer to the show or no? Uh, yeah, we just increased the aromasin like, uh, maybe five days ago. The reason I asked that is because that hollow feeling where I don't want to talk to anybody. You find it from that, right? Yeah. I feel like once I increase my antiestrogens, I'm like, I get more, I don't know, zoned out. Yeah. Or not as talkative or. Yeah. Some less, emo maybe more emotionless, I guess is kind of one of the things. I just want to be left alone. That's what I felt like yesterday. I feel, I feel completely normal today. I don't know what it was, but I, uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm good today. So we're. That's good, man. Yeah. What uh, prep is going good? What's your weight at now? 265, 266. You're going to hit the stage at like high 250s probably, eh? Yeah, I think I'll be basically exactly four pounds heavier than I was at the Olympia. So I was 253 at the Olympia. I think I'll be 257. Wow. You put on, did you, does you think it's something to do different in your prep or you think you put on four pounds of muscle? I think the training, man, like that, the last, like, going into the Olympia when I think that's why part of the reason I looked so good in the Olympia was just the training. And I think since then that, you know, that, uh, you know, momentum of the training has stayed, you know, really good training with Mark. And I had Julian with me before the Olympia and, you know, we've kind of kept that on a high note. And I think that's been literally the difference in, in the muscle I put on, you know, how do you think your training's gotten so much better at your age? Like it's, well, actually you're wait, you're 31, 30. Uh, I'm 30. Yeah. Yeah, I think I kind of went through a couple different phases, but I feel like your training is better now than I've seen it ever in the past. By, by far, man. I don't know what it was. Like, if it was just, a, you know, from having a good training partners, like, you know what it's like, you know? Yeah. yeah. Once you find some good training partners that you really connect with from, like, you know, a mentality standpoint, people that you really find push each other and, like, get a good, you know, a good rhythm together. Like, yeah. you know, like, I trained with Chris for years, and, you know, I trained with buddies here and there. And, like, look, it's good it's good training, you know, and yeah. I've always been someone that I, I take pride in training very hard. Um, but you know, when you find someone that just like, you know, really, really takes, you know, that extra step in pushing you and then you in return want to push them, which I've had with Julian and both with Mark as well. Mm -hmm. Um, it's just, you know, our training has just been on a very, very different level. And that's, you know, I've been pushing things past failure all the time. My strength has been, you know, at an all time high and it's really maintained right through prep. I mean, you know, I'm three weeks out and I'm still doing, you know, 12, 15 set yeah. RDL deadlifts with, you know, five plates and a half, like, like no problem, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I wonder if that's know. been my problem the whole time is I'm stuck with Paul this whole time and he's not really. <laughs> that's it. right? <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I think that's really what it is, man. I mean, it was just, everything kind of clicked. Like, you know, I, I really got, I think a stranglehold on the type of training and like the amount of sets. And I think Patrick really got a hold on, you know, when we need to, push the volume, push the intensifiers back off the intensifiers, you know, push more on the heavy sets, push more on the volume, like, you know, the kind of training we need to push yeah. uh, based off my look. And I think it's that coinciding with the intensity level that's been kind of cranked to 11 the last, you know, 18 months, you know, year, uh, I think has really been the, the game changer, you know? And like, I think even things like this, like my most recent shots, you look at the difference in volume I have in my quads, like that's just yeah. something like usually as I get closer into the show, and I'm still pushing, 
you know, leg training in a certain style, I find they'll start to come down where, you know, on those yeah. leg training days, we've altered, you know, the amount of intensifiers and the type of training we're doing, the cardio I do, you know, before and after leg day. And it's maintained a lot different look in my legs, you know? So like things like this that we've kind of figured out, I think it made a big difference, you know? So is Patrick, is Patrick kept a closer eye on you this time? Is it, is it like, no, I mean, last year I'll, I'll give it to Patrick, like 120% Patrick with me is, is like, so on the ball. Like I wake up every morning cause he's six hours ahead. Right. Yeah. So I wake up every morning. There's already a message from Patrick, like 100% every day without fail, never misses. <laughs> I wake up, there's a message from Patrick says, good morning, Ian, here's your diet for the day. My diet is every day. He sends the diet. Yeah sends the training for that day and it's all based off the photos i sent him the night before so i'll send him pictures the night before yeah. he'll say he'll see them when he wakes up he sends the diet for the day and you it's send every him, single day you said yeah every you send him pictures every single night yeah lately i've been doing every second day uh but yeah. we'll be getting into every day yeah that sounds like the most intensive coaching uh coach <laughs> athlete relationship i've ever heard of it's it's in that's not not in a bad way i mean that's no, great. i i i, I yeah. agree with you I and mean, i think in a lot of cases, overkill, unnecessary. Um, but we figured out for myself, like things can change like so quick, you yeah. know, like with the kind of metabolism and stuff I have and, you know, the level of training we're putting in, like, you know, if, if we don't look at things for two, three days or like say you're doing weekly check-ins, I can be down like 15 pounds and look is gone, you know? No, like, week, weekly check-ins don't work definitely as somebody at your level, but yeah. So um, it's, and, and I would say, like you said, it seems unnecessary, but it's working. So it's necessary, it's necessary for yeah. me and my physique. We found, you know, I don't yeah, think for yeah. everyone, you know, like I have some clients that change really quick and I'll get them to check in like maybe every three days or something. Um, you know, but for me, it's, you know, the every day, every two days has been kind of the, you know, the amount we found that it's, it's needed to keep a, a, a tight fit on things, you know? Yeah. It's a, it's a, we should probably preface what you're saying with it's going to be individual because there's going to be Absolutely. a lot of athletes out there going, why isn't my coach checking on me every day? Look, and I'll say, I don't check on any of my clients every day. Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah, yeah. So, like, I'm saying it myself. Like, I, you know, the most I check is maybe someone every other day, every three days. And that's, like, if they're really close and someone I know needs that. But, you know, it's, yeah, that's absolutely not needed for most people. Um, but for me, in my case, I have a very wacky metabolism that can, you know, ramp up to 15, like, really quickly. Um, you know, and, and for me, the game changer for me in my look from being, like, an okay bodybuilder to a seventh place at the Olympia all comes down to the fullness and like that level yeah. of like, yeah. you know, pop I have to the muscle and that when there's a level that it's gone, even at three weeks out, it can be very, very hard to get back. Um, so for me, it's, you know, we got to keep a, a tight eye on things like that to just make sure we're, you know, not pushing things too fast or, you know, fast yeah. enough, especially right. So you're still doing a ton of calories. Uh, yeah, it's not crazy, crazy. I mean, so I have three higher days on like my quad chest and try uh, chest and tries back and buys. Yeah. I'd say those are probably around, uh, 400 grams of carbs, maybe Okay. 450. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then my lower days are about 220. Um, and then my cardio has been, and my low, and my cardio has been 30 minutes basically every day, except for quad day. That's a, that seems like it seems easy. I mean, that's I guess that's the whole premise behind staying lean in the off season. Exactly. Yeah, which was so. a big, I made a big change for me too. And I mean, I and it was kind of like every year I know I'm better with every show, and I think the reason for that is because I'm already in shape. So it's like, well, if you start already in better shape, you're kind of expediting that process, right? Like you know, for me, my first show of the year, I'm historically never the best. So it's like, well, we don't want to have that happen this year because I don't have yeah. very many opportunities. So yeah. if I stay a little lot leaner, then we're, you know, kind of expediting that process of being, having multiple shows, you know, it's like, yeah. we're not having to get lean and shape one time and then get better. It's like, okay, we're getting lean. And then we're, you know, acting as if we were in shape four weeks out and then pushing in. Right. Still putting on four pounds of stage weight at 30 is, is pretty impressive. Most guys level off at a certain point. Like they'll get to like for me, it was two fifty five is pretty much my average for the last like that's kind of the biggest I got. It, it things mm -hmm. kind of just maybe things got a little bit better at that weight, but fifty five was really the the mark. I went over a couple times, but not really. Um, where do you think you'll level? Do you have any idea where you think you'll level off, where your body's going to be like? I have a pretty big structure, man. I think I can honestly handle without compromising my look and like my stomach is maintained like look yeah. I, I know there's going to be a point where one off season it probably won't come back quite the same 
Yeah. Um, hopefully it, it, that's not the case, but so far my stomach comes back tight, you know, and it stays lean and or stays tight and I can control it all the time. Um, you know, but with, I'm pretty broad in the shoulders and I'm not a short guy. So I, I think I can easily handle 264 to 265, yeah. you know, another like yeah. six to eight pounds for sure. Yeah. Um, or my look might get worse, you know, or just, I won't gain much more at that point. Um, but yeah, no, I, I'm not like trying to push like I was say three, four, five years ago to like every year really crank that weight up. Yeah. You know, I want to just get better in certain shots. And I, if I happen to put on a pound, two pounds, three pounds, that's great. Um, but I'm not at the point where I'm like trying to crank the food in like crazy in the off seasons and really try and push the scale up. Um, like this last off season, I wasn't heavier than the previous off season, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, What's so uh, it's, it's hey, more you, about quality than quantity at this point for me, I think. Are you training abs? Like not abs, but are you doing vacuums all year? Is that how you keep your waist so tight all the time? <sighs> no, I don't do any vacuums. Honestly, I do planks. And I think the, the next biggest thing is just, abdominal control all the time like I never and it's become subconscious for me like even sitting here now like my stomach's never relaxed it's always like drawn in from the sides you know like I'm always thinking of keeping it tight like when I sit in my car when I train I always think of keeping it tight and under control all the time is that conscious though like are you so you're consciously was, thinking it of it initially was conscious and now I don't even think about it it's just all the time that's how it feels and if I let it relax then that honestly feels weird you know so I feel like that's the purpose behind like when people say should I wear a waist trainer for me, oh, I'm conscious of controlling yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, I feel like that's the whole point of it. It's not actually shrinking your waist. It's just no, because relaxing into a waist trainer is uncomfortable. So you want to yeah. keep it drawn in and tight. And I, I find for me, I've just been able to do that over time naturally, you know? Yeah, maybe that's, um, what, I, maybe that's what I need to do is wear my waist trainer more because yeah. I tend to relax a lot. Like yeah. even I notice even when you're training, like you see different guys training. Like if I see Dusty Hanshaw do like a hack squat or even like when I do a hack squat or like my stomach will come out, right? Yeah. I notice when you're hack squatting or whatever you're doing, your stomach's always in. Yeah, see, because I, to brace my stomach, I try and push it into my spine, not outwards, you know? So like- but doesn't that me, feel, doesn't that huh? feel, doesn't that feel less solid for you? For me, no. I mean, maybe it would have five years ago, but like, it's been a transition that I didn't really notice, you know? Like, so yeah. I just think about like squeezing the obliques like in and like kind of pushing it all back. And that's like kind of like keeping it all tight for me, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And just like doing that all the time now, it's like, now I don't even think about it. And like, if you were to ask me like right now, it's like, it's sitting tight. Like if I sit in my car, it's sitting tight. Like it's not, yeah, you know, I never I, let it like, you know. Cause I feel like, you know, when they teach you to squat or like, you know, take a deep breath yeah. and then squat. And usually when you take a deep breath, your stomach comes out a bit. And if you're wearing a belt, then yes, I, I agree. If you're using a belt, yeah. but like when I hack squat, I don't wear a belt, but if I'm deadlifting or something, well, yeah, the point of the belt is to push against the belt. Right. So then you'll, let, so then you'll let it go. Uh, yeah, well, I'll let it go or I'll put yeah. force as hard as I can into the belt. I see. You know, so, but I put my belt on tight enough that I can't get a ton of expansion. Yeah. It's just like, so that my stomach is drawn in and then I'm just pushing that little extra bit into the belt, you know? Yeah, yeah, makes sense. Um, but yeah, I use the belt as like a brace, but if I'm hack squatting where I don't wear a belt, then I'm drawing in, yes. I want to, I want to just take a look at this real quick. Did you change your... Front lat? Yeah. Uh, yeah, what's... Well, yeah, I mean, I've been playing around with it. Like, see, this is in a video, that picture. One second. There we go. This is what I want to see. This, it looks like your front lat spread's different. Yeah, it's because I'm not flexing my chest. I'm letting it relax. Yeah, it's way better, dude. Like, Yeah, it's, it's, it's good like this. It's, it's a hit or miss. I mean, like, this is from a video, this screenshot here, where eventually I do pull it up. So it's like I, I hit it, and then I kind of, like, hold it and then I pop it up and yeah I mean it's I like I see positives to both sides I think for me this looks more impressive because I historically have not a great chest so this shows a lot of volume to the chest that wouldn't have been there before yeah yeah um, but, but I it think just... you know, when I flex it you see a little more striation you know I get my chest up a little higher you can see it a little more lat so it's but I just uh but sorry I... you know just I feel like well, first of all, is this, hey, guys, sister, you know, how are you? Hey, I feel like you're trying to be like Bo Lewis with those boxer briefs and that fucking front last break. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, what I was going to say is... I fluffed a little, you know? <laughs> it's not... I know you're trying to get... You might be trying to get striations out and shit, but I feel like when I've seen your lat spread in the past and your most muscular, 
you bring your, it's almost like we were saying the same thing saying we were saying to Nick, you bring your elbows around too far. Yeah, drawing too much, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and it makes you look smaller, whereas this, now I can see your width. Yeah. Like, you actually look like, because you're a wide guy, and now, now your shoulders are straight out, your shoulders are expanded like that, and your elbows aren't together. Yeah. Uh, I can see it better. Yeah. What is, what is going on, Paul? What are you doing over there? What's, that, what all, what's all that noise? <laughs> can I get a heartbeat? Is that Paul? <laughs> I forgot his headphones. <laughs> He's a fucking hurricane, bro. This guy. Look at him. It just comes on with fucking like a like a sounds like we're at a rock concert. <laughs> hey guys. What's up? What's up? We've been listening to you um, stumble around for five minutes. I'm on a different computer. I had to use a different computer today. <laughs> How's it going, Paul? <laughs> I'm good for that. How you doing? I'm good, man. What are you guys talking your, about? Your entrances to this fucking podcast are better than you know. <laughs> guy, guy is first. You're a close second. I, feel uh, I didn't know. Either. I wasn't well, prepared. So you're more, you're more professional, and you just log on and you're ready. What I'm saying I feel left out is you guys all have such nice salt and pepper gray going on your beards, and I'm. Like, <laughs> oh, you got actually. I have salt and pepper. You have like salt. I have salt. I have all salt. You look like somebody just puts your face in a fucking mound of cocaine. I know. Who has, <laughs> who has tried to tell me to diet, but I haven't done it. I don't know. I'm reluctant. See, mine in Why? person, my chin is quite gray, but like my hair Dude, is... you know what I've noticed? We've all changed completely. We just... Paul, you look completely different from when you, you were look? on the show when I started. I'm completely different. Who yeah. has the only one that's been consistently fucking... <laughs> Good, well, good no, looking, well, consistently where's, good looking. Uh, where's, where's the blue oh, blockers? I'm just going to say consistently ugly through the entire podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, that's they, consistent with they that. They started to bother my eyes. Uh, see, what? I found they bothered my eyes. Way? That's why I stopped wearing them. I bought them because I was. Are they real? Well, I would yeah. ex I would explain if everybody would just stop talking at the same time. <laughs> this podcast is all about interruptions. So, <laughs> I started wearing them because my eyes were bothering me from the the fucking all the screens the you know the yeah. full, your phone your computer whatever and then i yeah. noticed i started wearing them and then my vision started to get blurry again right like the blurriness started to get worse and i'm like fuck this so i stopped wearing them and now my eyes feel better yeah are those so, reading glasses no they're just blue light no they're just blue light oh. glasses yeah oh so they're just they're they're really help? sorry guy do they really help i see guys wearing like the blue ones and then the yellow ones or the orange ones or the red ones i just wanted to wear them because they're I don't care about the like the color. I just thought they were supposed to help you from like. Yeah. It's actually for sleep because you're supposed to like if you wear them like yeah. a couple hours before bed. See, that's it. Because for me, I watch a lot. Like I watch a lot of Netflix and stuff on my phone at night. It's so, like yeah. I hold my phone really close, especially in dark rooms. So I was like, okay, well, I'll try wearing these blue light glasses when I, especially like the last like two three hours before bed, and I'll wear these. But then I finally just made my vision kind of weird, like blurry, and gave me kind of headachey. So I stopped wearing them. Yeah, but you well, can you know if you have an iPhone. You, you, there's something on your iPhone. I put the night can... shift on. Yeah, I do that. Yeah, it's like an amber color. Yeah, but yeah. Ian watches Isn't that kind of the same fucking thing. Ian watches porn like this, so it's yeah. <laughs> probably, probably like, fucking I, up his I, 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 And wait, and who was the one that shit standing up? Was that you, Ian? No, that's Paul. Paul shit standing up. No, I'm a standing oh, up. Wipe, oh, wipe, 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 standing wipe, up. Wipe, 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 no, wipe. I wipe. Yeah, I wipe. Yeah. Yeah. I got a whole thing because I was telling I was telling who had this in my house the, the main chair the rolls on my left hand side I, I can't use my left hand so I have to stand up yeah twist my body you know yeah, yeah you guess it wait 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 yeah that's what I said that's what I said guy wait wait what? can I just ask a question wait. does anyone wipe their ass with their left hand like I'm left handed and I've never wiped my ass with my left hand no really? why are we talking about I, shitting again like what the fuck. <laughs> Oh, I had to. Playing, after my shoulder surgery. I've never tried to wipe my ass with my left hand in my entire life, ever. No, I had to um, after I had shoulder surgery in my right me arm. Too. Me too. Was it weird? Yeah, it's, yeah, oh, it's super, like it's super like a weird. strange. You're wiping your ass. Yeah. It is. It is, and you're there. And you're there for 20 minutes. It takes twice as long because <laughs> you can't get it right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I had to. You know, I had to lean, so I got shoulder surgery on this shoulder, and then five weeks later, I got this one done. So Ab, when I got this one done and this one was recovered and I got, and or when I got this one done and this one recovered, I had a wipe. And the, because the doctor, I was like, can you do both at the same time? And he's like, unless you have like a loyal, loyal wife or girlfriend, I don't think you do that. So I would have to like hang on to like the sink and like squat down and like oh. lean back <laughs> because I had no shoulder mobility to like get my arm around <laughs> my butt. It was like a circus act to wipe my ass. So, guy, Paul <laughs> has to 
get up and in a squat position and turn all the way around. This is what yeah. I do every day. This is normal for me. You turn around really? too? Of course. Wait, so you're so wait, so wait, you so, shit. You so shit wait like a minute. You're you're shitting like you're sitting away from the toilet, right? Yeah, so like say yeah. this is it. I'm wait, taking you're a shit. You're sitting away from the toilet. Like, yeah, so you, like the back of the toilet is behind you, right? Like you're sitting on the yeah, toilet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. Like you're supposed there, to. The yeah. toilet. My toilet paper's on this side, though. So I, I get up, I kind of like read my, and I go here, and then I throw the toilet. Yeah. Yeah. What is so fucking hard about doing this? <laughs> yeah. I, <agree. laughs> like, I don't know. You guys realize you were born with fucking two sets Why, of fucking. Yeah, paper, one second. Right? I, one sec, guy. I agree with you. One second. So you're Ian, standing up anyway. You might as well just. But why can't, you, it, yeah. why can't you pull the toilet paper and get it ready before you stand up at least? No. Yeah. What do you mean, no? You mean, why would I do that? I just stand up and do it all because you want to move because around. You want to the... you want to move around as little as possible when the sh area is dirty. Because the thought of you standing up with shit particles smashing like, in your butthole. What you, not, wait, what did you say? What did you say? Not, I said, I'm not going for a jog. I'm just stand up, man. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, there's not stuff flying up through it. I don't know what you're thinking. Yeah, but it's the fact that you're yeah. standing up with a dirty butthole doing a 180 when you could just fucking slide the old fruit by the foot roll past you and crumble it up to wipe your ass is yeah. picturing you doing this. <laughs> <laughs> I like the, the quick little pivot. <laughs> The, the football, it's mind boggling football to me. <laughs> yeah, mind boggling to me. Like the little footsteps, like the little penguin steps. <laughs> I don't know how the fuck we get back. But this whole podcast is just talking about shit even, now. As of today, my car is now faster than guys. Why would you do to it? Well, did you get an M4, you faggot? Yeah, did you, buy, <laughs> did you, buy, a, did you <laughs> buy a faster car? <laughs> I, did, I, I, I did intercooler, downpipes, cat back intake, and a, just a tune. So you got like. 45 horsepower more. No, I have Wait, didn't we have a bet that Ian wasn't going to buy a car? Yeah. Yeah. That's not buying a car. No, no he didn't buy a car yet. No. That's modding a car. So I, I, I still got three weeks. He still got three what weeks. What do you got? He's got, got a car. He's got a Kia. Damn, bro. Ian, dri right, Ian, dri yeah. Ian drives a cute little stinger. Oh, Fluid hates that. Yeah, he's going to be all over you. <laughs> well, I used to drive a Honda. I heard it every day. Yeah, but my, my 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 stinger has like 500 horsepower now, so it's all. Hey, good. did Paul get a new computer, a new internet connection? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, I'm on it. Did I freeze? You're all frozen. Freeze. Yeah. No, I'm frozen for five we can my hear we can hear you. Oh, now am I good? No, no, your face is frozen still. Your face looks absolutely. I'm still frozen. frozen. Yeah. Yeah. What can I do? Do I refresh this or something or what? Your nose looks humongous. Hang on. Hey. Well, there you are. You're back. Well, thank you. Oh. Oh, you're gone now. <laughs> just disappeared completely <laughs> what is wrong with him anyway what did you add to your so you added like 50 horse to your car uh well no with the tune i'm like oh the tune probably add more yeah yeah so i'm like pushing close to 100 more so you have 500 horse now yeah fuck so what's the That's zero to six zero to 60 now is what like four and a half seconds yeah i'll be low fours i think yeah guy's still faster than you no i think i'll be faster than him now I think he was, wait 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 you just you you prefaced with my car is definitely faster than the guys to then <laughs> statistically being slower to then stating I still think I'm faster. No, I, think it I don't know for I don't know for a fact. I haven't done a zero to sixty, but I think that just sums the, that just sum, summarizes this entire podcast of what we all. I think. will be I will be faster than guys' car now. Yes, I don't think so. I, I'm because I think guys I think guys zero to sixty is like four point one seconds. Yeah, I'll be faster than that for sure. No way. There's no fucking way. Yeah. You you think a tune and a, and some downpipes gave you like over a second and a half on a zero to sixty? I think all of them combined, I will be. Yeah. No way. Yeah. I I bet you any money. Let's make a bet. Let's figure I mean, it out. I added a quarter more horsepower onto my car. What's your What's your car again, guy? An M four forty I or something like that? I'm not talking because last time I did this, I got fucking very upset. Because <laughs> I thought I had an M4. Like, I thought that's what I actually got. It's I'm four. Not, like, okay. Is it, no, there's no way. His is four. I have an M440XI. His is a four seconds flat, Ian. Who? Yours. Yours is four seconds flat. So, a Kia Stinger. What? M440I says 4.5 to 5.2 for zero to 100. Oh, I got four seconds flat. Look, it's right here. Share screen. Look. You have an M4 then. 
No, no, no. M440i, mortartrend.com. Six, zero to 60, 4.0 seconds flat. Well, look at mine. Right? Look, go to what, what, what website is that, though? Well, just Google M440i specs. Yeah, but this is Motor Trend. Motor Trend yeah, is just Google what I'm seeing so I can you can see what I'm seeing. M440i specs. All right. Why is my car getting fucking destroyed? We're not. <laughs> okay, okay, where where are we looking here? Uh, there on the right side. Look, right side. M440. Oh. 4.5. This is an average. This is an average. This is an average. Okay. Okay. I'll give but you. Isn't there? There's got to be. Is is it? I have a 440 XI. Is does that make a difference or not? I mean, I'm pushing. I'm pushing a hundred more horsepower than that now. He's got 382. I have like 470. Yeah, I know, but that's not that's not the only thing that matters because if I go like this, Kia and I'm all wheel drive. He's only going to be rear wheel drive. No, he's no. got the, he's got the extra. He's got X drive. Oh, okay. He's got he's got X drive. We've uh, gone over this, Ian. Ian. Kia Stinger specs. Zero to sixty is not listed there, so let's see. You know what the four, answer should 4. be? Four point seven. Oh, oh you know what? You're right. You're right. I'm sorry. You're right. I'll, I'll be faster now with the tune. Yeah, I think so for sure. Because you're four point seven. I thought you were five point seven before. That's why no. I said that. And like I added now a hundred horsepower almost to that, so I'll be low fours if not lower than four. Yeah. Fine. I'll just do something to my car to up yours. <laughs> okay, cool. Well, what you could do, what you could do, is buy the real M4. It'd be fine. I thought I did. <laughs> <laughs> That's what'll happen if guy does that. I, mean, I honestly, I, I, I must be that ignorant. I didn't know that M4 and M440 were completely different fucking cars. Well, because they do like an M Sport. That way, you get all the badging and you get some of the like ground effects and some of the different things that look. What is that banging? Is that Paul? No, I'm not banging nothing. Can you guys see me? I, no. no. What is that I banging? I, I was I hearing like a like a thumping. Just Everybody stop talking. Work. Stop talking. Maybe it's your house. No, it's not. You guys don't you hear. You can't that? see me. Now I can hear it. Yeah. yeah. It's a hundred percent Paul. It's a hundred percent Paul. Hundred percent Paul. It's not me. It sounds it's like somebody. You guys can't Paul see me. in your kitchen. Paul just needs to log off. You guys can't see me at all. I'll log off. I see and Paul. Your, your Should video, I log off? Well, your video is off. Your okay. Video, your video is off. Just press video on. Okay. 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 Hang on. Where's that? It's in the bottom. <laughs> it's in the bottom left corner. <laughs> View. The bottom yeah, left. There's a oh, video. there it is. Okay. Okay, I'm pressing it. Okay, you should be popping up now. No. No. Hey, Paul, take your computer. Yeah. Unplug it uh -huh. and fucking throw it out the door. <laughs> <laughs> You can, you can log off and use. Okay, your phone. I'm gonna log off. Use your phone. Hi. Like. I'm gonna do that. Can you kick him? Yeah. Off? Is that I'm gonna do that. Get kicked off of Zoom. Can no, you just no. kick him the fuck off when he acts up like that? I, just I can, yes. fucking. Okay, Paul, are you going? No, you just all you did was uh, mute yourself. Just boot him out. Okay. It's fine. He's muted. It's it's good. Guy, now you're muted. I thought you said the mute. No, no, no. I, Paul is muted and is he's still there. It's just oh. he's muted and his I camera's off. Well, now I know the banging was coming from Paul's thing because now I can't hear it anymore. Yeah. Anyway, but he's still there. Yeah, I don't know what he's doing. No, he's back. One second. <laughs> I may be late to this pot. Wait, did he get? Is he on another computer now? There's two poles. Paul, you didn't even disconnect from the original one. I did. It's okay. It's gone. Oh. <laughs> Turn your phone sideways because Fuad's going to tell you to in 30 seconds. Oh, hang on. I got to plug these in. I need my uh, headphones. I need my headphones. Hang on. Can we just do a segment of fucking how dumb Paul is sometimes? Uh, <laughs> if the bodybuilding of Bollocks guy is watching this, can you please do a montage of all of Paul's entrances, including these little fuck ups? Because this is crazy. It's like a whole episode could be done with this. It could be, yeah. Um, <clears throat> okay. So your car is way faster. That means you're probably not going to buy a car now. So I forget what the bet was, though, guy. And I'll buy a car. Why would you buy a car? Your car is brand new. I got to buy a car. I'll buy a car just because if he buy, if he mods his car faster than me, just to be an asshole, I'll just get a new car. <laughs> okay. I'll have a car. He's got new headphones on, too. Uh, I'm go. trying to talk Paul into buying a new car. Uh, yeah, I like my Explorer for it. Paul drives a nice Explorer. Obviously, it's a family car. But, sure, it's, really? but, it, but it's five years old, so I was like, why don't you buy a new one? Do you like the yeah. 
you like the new Broncos, the real ones, not those sport things? Yeah. I so. actually drove by one the other day. It was a Bronco. I don't know if it was a sport, but it was a new, the newer Broncos. And I'm like, I drove a Bronco too when I was younger. And I'm like, eh. Yeah. Dude, it looks like What's a dinky. It looks, it looks too dinky yeah. carish, man. They're, not They're small. I was expecting like the OJ Simpson Bronco to come out. <laughs> that's, well, what I, that's what I, that's what I, one edition looks kind of close. And then the other ones look like sh really shitty Range Rovers. Well, I think if you took any car, like obviously you could take that car and, you know, jack it up and put big ass mutters on it and it's going to look cool. Right. Yeah. But I mean like stock from the factory, I'm not, not a big fan. <laughs> yeah. like, meh. Hey, um, did you guys watch the fights this weekend? Yeah. Yep. What'd you guys think? Ouch to Connor's ankle. Yeah. So, okay. So I'll be more specific. I watched a bunch of people online go, he didn't lose. He broke his leg. It should be a fourth fight. How do you guys feel about that? Uh, yeah. No, I think he, I think he was going to lose either way, but yeah. Yeah. I agree. I can't say uh, in fighting, you can't say, I think somebody was going to lose because even though he was on the ground getting pounded, you I've seen fights where I thought the guy was damn near gonna fucking die, come back and knock the dude out. So, okay, let me. I, I don't, but he also, he also, and, and, and the Poirier said it, and when they sh re showed it too, he did initially hurt that ankle on a checked kick that he stopped with his arm. So, yeah. like, that was his own kick that was then checked that broke his ankle that he then stepped on. So, it's like, that's a loss to me. I, 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 it's a loss. I don't think, I think he lost the fight. I don't think. No, wait were, a minute. You know, no, wait, wait a minute. Just a, just a question. So <clears throat> if, if I kick you guy and you block it with your elbow and my leg breaks, it counts as a loss. I, I said that. Yeah. Right. So it's a loss. So what I'm saying yeah. is then should there be a fourth fight? No, no, I don't want to see that. I, I think there should be a fourth fight because there was, there was no, the, the decision of the fight was stopped by doctor's fucking orders because the doctor called the fight. Because yeah, he, and, and I have to say this, too. I don't care what anybody says. Conor McGregor had a compound, compound fracture and ate, like, six shots while his broken leg. So he, this fucking fight didn't stop because he didn't want to be TKO'd like that. So he fucking laid there and moved around in eight shots with a fucking leg that was cracked in half. So he that... didn't take the loss like that. No, no, no. Wait I a thought minute. that was crazy. How is that valiant? Because the universal. Yeah, just, Let you, me that, finish that, my sentence. Time. Let me finish my sentence. hundred percent value. How do you, how do you, the universal sign in fighting for I tap without actually saying I tap or tapping is going like this and turtling into a, a little ball. Which well, is what he, which is what he did. To get up and run a forty-yard dash. No, 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 no. But I'm saying the fact that he did that is him saying to the ref, "Like I'm done." Right? No, like because he, he would easily tapped out. Because no, because before he 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 went down, he you, he looked up at the clock, and there was like I think five or six seconds, and he knew what he was doing. So he what are you trying so, to avoid okay, getting is, tapped out? Okay, what is your point of all of that? You think there should be a fourth fight? I think there's in order. I think he won. I think in order for shit to be square. And straight, I think there should be a fourth fight. Mm -hmm. I'm a regular mm -hmm. fan. I'm not. I, I am. I, I, I. I think Puri is a great fighter, but I think him breaking a leg is a freak accident. I think if he wants a fourth fight, let him fucking have it. I don't think you can call it a freak accident if you're practicing defense and your defense works. Yeah. I mean, right? like if you check well, a kick, like listen, if you check a kick with your knee, I'm not a. Before anybody says anything in the comment section, I'm not a fucking fighter. I only know what I see in the UFC, so I'm not trying to pretend to be an expert, but. If you check a kick with your knee, right? Then when they put their leg up and they check the kick and the guy breaks his ankle on your fucking knee, that was your defensive move that countered his offensive move. You did it on purpose. Same thing with an elbow. If he kicks you in the side and you drop your elbow and it breaks his ankle, your defense overcame his offense. Yeah. So yeah. It's not, a I agree. Freak, it's not a, a freak accident would be, he was totally fine and he took a wrong step and it like broke. That's a freak <clears> accident. <throat> but like, well, I mean, that's what claiming happened. Yeah. I mean, how, how can they how can they clarify or, or definitively show that his there was a the, there was a slow motion. I didn't I see that. I can't remember what uh, channel did it, but I guess there was a they did the kick in slow motion and right you before see, so he threw a kick yeah. and hit his forearm, and then that's when he stepped down through the punch. He stepped on his ankle and it went. No, but you can see the one the one video I watched. I guess you can when he kicks it, you can see it go. When it actually hits the elbow, you can see his ankle shift. 
Well, and oh, here, okay, hold on. Perfect example. Well, I'm and, actually, and, actually, and, his, at it. and his coach said it too. His coach said that oh. was the kick that did it. Well, I'm you a question. And, and this is because this is a bodybuilding channel. 2017, I got those nasty burns at New York. Remember, I had the burn marks all over the, me. It's not the same. I, no, hold on. I went to prejudging, and it, it got so bad I had to leave because it was a freak. It was a fucking. That's a freak. that's a freak. Accident. And I got a did not place. Yeah, but that's no. A freak if you say anybody beat, I got a did not Real. place. So like he didn't finish the fight not because he got knocked out because he had a fucking injury. No, 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 no. This is a different thing. Your burn. You're saying that your burn. Your not- block is broke his leg, which ended the fight. Your yeah. burn, your burns were a freak accident. Nobody did anything to cause them. Well, maybe you did. I, I was taking. His injury was inflicted in the arena caused by a move that was trying to be offensive that was then used blocked. against. Him. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. Point I even think that's very, it. very hard. Even with you have slow motion or not, very hard to prove to me. Well, yeah, it's hard to prove. No, that guy, you guy, show that somebody broke something. No. In slow motion, the guy, guy his won. his coach Kavanaugh actually said it in an interview that he yeah. thought that was the kick that did it. Well, and Poirier said it like right when the fight like, ended. Like Connor's Connor's coat, Connor's coat. Well, I remember Poirier said he thought he he, he thought he he cracked. No, no, it no, 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 no. Connor Connor's coat. No, no, but oh. Poirier said it during the fight after the yeah, fight. He, he, said he, yeah. thought he, he pointed broke. at it. Yeah, after yeah. it broke. Yeah. So if it's if it's caused by the other fighter. And then to top it off, he was kind of on top of him the whole fucking round. To be honest with you, yeah. that first fight, if you guys watched the whole card, the first fight was Sean, uh, Sean O'Malley. Sean O'Malley. That was an yeah. awesome fight. <laughs> so, yeah. they, so they, that was the greatest. I fucking love that fight. So they, that guy was awesome. Well, I don't know if you watched the guy, but that fight, the guy he was fighting was getting pummeled the entire fight. Oh, and I'm, and I'm talking. Well, I watched it. it okay, yeah. So remember the ref stopped it at the end and there wasn't, the yeah. guy was still fighting and he stopped that it. The guy was, was like, what are you doing? Nonsense yeah. stop. Nonsense. Yeah. So I'm like, if you're going to stop that, couldn't there have been a couple points in the Connor fight where it could have been stopped when he was on the ground and he was eating elbows? No, because mm-hmm. they were both throw. He was Connor was throwing back too. Yeah, he was mm-hmm. throwing back. He was throwing back. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That you other know, guy was eating. Well, that guy, that guy, other guy was eating straight fucking fists. He was, was just coming forward and getting punched yeah, right in the face every time. <laughs> he was still walking forward the entire time. That, that was guy, the whole time. With that little time, you should have just let that go, man. That was such a, you know, that yeah, kid yeah. earned his stripes to like finish that fight you should have let it finish yeah, like as much as he got his ass kicked that was one of the most impressive the kid took the fight at like very little notice he's yeah, fighting guys way out of his snack bracket like sean o'malley yeah. is a very good fighter yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. and he yeah. survived the entire fight while getting his fucking face just annihilated you no know? it's crazy <laughs> i've seen we've seen sean o'malley like lay out people with one shot yeah this guy just eating yeah. fucking punches the whole fight he, he, he took like, his I best shots swallowing. clean connection yeah. swallowing yeah, yeah. yeah. i his started connection rate must have been like 95 percent i didn't watching, miss anything yeah i started watching that fight as a sean o'malley fan i finished i was rooting for the other kid yeah i'm like, yeah. I'm like i hope this kid connects with like an accidental punch yeah. so I can the take whole time because he was still moving forward and like yeah you know when when he'd start swinging you could see sean was like get get a little yeah. worried i'm like he's yeah. gonna connect with him i know i know i was waiting for it <laughs> and that's why and that's why i thought he shouldn't have stopped it i'm like the kid's getting beat he's you know he's getting his ass kicked but he's but still the thing is the damage is done like yeah you let it go for 15 minutes. What's another minute and a half? Like, just let you know his face is going to be fucked for the next month anyway. Yeah, just let it yeah, happen. Yeah. Rogan during the fight, Rogan was like, "His face is roadkill." Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it looked like when you take meat with like one of those like mallets and fucking tenderize yeah. it. And you're like, yeah. So yeah. Connor, Bro- so Connor, Rogan's hilarious. Hilarious. you ever watch him commentate? He's fucking hilarious. Oh, Ooh, Rogan, yes. the best of them does for sure. Yeah. So mm-hmm. Connor deserves a fourth fight in your mind, guy. I I think I I I think Connor lost the fight. I think that for viewer purpose, and I think for even the fans of Connor and Peoria, I think because it ended with a broken leg, I think we all want to see a fourth fight. Just for reference, Connor's not the same Connor he was four or five years ago. I'm going to say that. I with, I can, I, I, huh? What are you laughing at, Paul? I heard you. <laughs> heard I, correcting his pronunciation. I had to. I had to, because somebody in the comments section is going to be like, "Why did you guys correct his words?" So I'm like, By "How I'm uh, saying it? It's Poirier." Yeah. yeah. Um, Poirier. Yeah. Do you think, go ahead, guys. Do you think Connor uh, could ever be? I call fucking Connor ever come back? And, and that's, that's yeah. That's actually a better question. Is will Connor even come back after all this? Does it take him six months like to get? Let back. me tell you something. You can't yeah. talk this shit. He. Did you hear him say your wife sliding in my DMs? Yeah. That's fine of the night. They, it was when he was like, your wife sliding in my fucking DMs with a broken leg. I'm like, this guy. And then he called her a hoe. 
Huh? And then he called her a hoe. <laughs> is that is that cool though? Like I didn't uh, say it was cool. I said funny. No, no, no I'm asking. I'm not saying you per. I'm saying. Is there a point where I'm like, okay, dude, seriously, you're on the you're on the ground, your fucking angle's broken, and you're still talking shit. I'm gonna say this. I know they had beef, but the other dude, so I don't get yelled at. Poirier was fucking. He was throwing some shade at Connor while he's down with a broken fucking leg. Well, he, was, he, he, he didn't say he was gonna murder him before the fight. I yeah. know. But I'm I'll just saying, the guy's got a broken leg. He wasn't. He was. He was throwing jabs at him while he the guy was fucking leg sideways on the ground. So I mean, I can see why Connor got a little pissed off. His uh, wife shot him the finger too, but she yeah. was walking out. Yeah, who? His wife, Poirier's yeah. wife. Oh, Poirier's wife said, uh, gave Connor the she, finger. Yeah, she walked by him and shot him the finger, and that's what he started. Yeah, but they still showed the video <laughs> after. So when Dustin was getting interviewed by Rogan, McGregor was sitting there going, "I'm going to kill you. I'm going to kill. I'm going to come to your house and kill you in your sleep." And he was making like gun signs. <laughs> Just like, really? Yeah. So, so <laughs> there's enough blame to go around to everybody. I think. Yeah. Anyways, um, more importantly, back, back. Sorry, go ahead, Ian. No, finish up. I was going to say more importantly, back to bodybuilding. Um, the Arnolds now, shockingly, and for those people watching that don't understand, uh, the Olympia qualifier, the last qualifier of the of the season, is usually has to be four weeks before the Olympia, so that they yeah. can get the athletes all ready for their their track suits ready and get their flights prepared and all that shit. But this year, they've decided the Arnold's, even though it's only two weeks before the Olympia, that the Arnold's now is a qualifier for the O. Oh, I can hear that. Yeah, they, they just made the Arnold's the qualifier, the last qualifier for the Olympia. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's What huge. about the other shows leading up to that show? Well, the, well, obviously, Tampa and Texas are. I don't think there's any other shows after Texas. There, there oh, is, but they're not counting as qualifiers, now. What are the other shows after Texas? Well, there's like random other shows, like I don't know, bodybuilding shows. I don't no, know no, I'm not saying like, you're wrong. I just don't know. I don't know the schedule. I, I don't. It's Toronto. Yeah, but that's no, in December. December, December I mean, yeah. Yeah, I meant before the O. Oh. Oh, before the O. That's I think I think there's there's Chicago still left to Chicago, Tampa, Texas, Portugal, Spain. Those are the ones I know of. Yeah, there's Spain after Texas or the same weekend as Texas, then the yeah. Arnold. You're right. Yeah, so the Arnold is well, the only then one. There's the UK Arnold, but that's not a qualifier. No, I don't no. think so. And that's a week before the Olympia. So yeah, I mean it's yeah, you're just getting that one extra qualifier in there. Yeah. Huh. I w- it'd be cool. They, sh- they should just make the UK, but I mean, I know a week is really close, but okay. they should just do it. It's like it's a qualifier. You just don't get the perks, you know? Like, yeah. But they, is they, it they, only the winner, Fuad, or is it top three? I don't know the full. Uh, I think it's the same as any other show, like any other. Is the it? winner qualifies, and then it's ra- it's ranked points. as a tier one show. So your points for second, third, fourth, fifth are like a lot, you know? Yeah. Okay. Like second that place. But I think general, like, like I, I still points. That could be really interesting because I think Hassan. And uh, El Amam have the most points right now. They do, but I, but they could be overtaken if somebody the Arnold fucking does really well. You know, and takes second or something like that. They could. I mean, this is good for me too because, like, say by chance I come second in both the shows I do, and then I can squeeze a fifth place at the Arnold. That could be my Olympia qual. I, I'm yeah, confident yeah. I will win one of the shows, but hey, it's like you got to look at all the possibilities, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. I think that's an interesting thing because we're all talking about. You know, we've been talking for the last few weeks about how is everybody gonna get everybody to qualify. Yeah. And now, now they've added another show, so now it gets really, really interesting now. It would be yeah. cool if they did do a top three from the Arnold, because I think that show is more than capable of... I think so. I think it, I that mean, show deserves it. If you're placing top three in this Arnold lineup, you're a top six Olympian. Like, Yeah, absolutely. But I think yeah. it's nice. I think it's nice having, like, elimination, though, no? It's like, I know, look, I, there's two. I have well, two you're having elimination. You're having everyone except for the top three. You know. I know, but you're adding more people. Like I like it being really exclusive. Like you either have to win or you have to get these points. Otherwise, you're out. I, like, I agree with that. I do like the win and you're in. It keeps it very elite. Yes. I feel like yeah. it's the top. But like you're having top. points anyways. So you're gonna have guys that qualify on points. I think someone that qualified third place on points is no better than someone that came third place at the Arnold. That I agree with you. You could be. So third like, place. if you're gonna have one, yeah. you could have both. If you're gonna have neither, have neither. You know. The, like, right, the yeah. shows used to be all shows across the board were top, top three. three. Yeah. 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 Remember that? This weekend, right? That's, that's, know, that's, that's that. too much. That's too much, though. Yeah. yeah. But that, didn't they make it later so that only certain shows were top three? Other ones had to be first. No, only. they, no, went, they, they went, from... went top three to fucking winner. Yeah. And, and then they only made like an exception last year for that one show, the yeah. Portugal Europa. or whatever, Europa. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they made so in years past, 
the Arnold top, it's always just the Arnold winner that qualifies yeah. the last few years. It's not yeah, but then three. it's weighted very heavy for points. So say like a show like New York Pro, where you might get eight points for second, you might get like 15 at the Arnold, you know? Oh, I see. Okay. Like you could come second place at the Arnold and qualify on points and do zero yeah. at the shows, you know? Which which makes sense. I mean, it should be that way. Does. If you're second place at the Arnold, Ohio, you're probably going to be in the top 10 at the Olympia. Yeah. Easily. Yeah. So you deserve to get all those points and deserve to be at the Olympia if you're second place at the yeah. Arnold. Yeah, I should carry um, more weight. So we have uh, Portugal coming up this weekend. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm shocked that no, and I, I shouldn't say it the way. All Europeans. I'm shocked that nobody has jumped into the show to try and get a, a qualification out of this because it seems to be a smaller show. Uh, mm -hmm. oops, still looking at the stinger. <clears throat> um, okay. This is the lineup here. There's some good guys, though. This is a, a, a lineup that a lot of guys might think is weak, but it's actually pretty solid. I mean, no, wait. Well, let me rephrase it before anybody thinks I meant that. I think it's a good lineup. They're all very, very even. It's probably going to be a really good show. It just, we're not used to, like, there's no bigger names in the show. No, no, no big yeah. North American names. For no sure. big North American names. So first, Andrea, Andrea Presti has the, I think, the best placing in this lineup right now. Because uh, were one of those two yeah. Andreas weren't they, they weren't the same two Andreas in the other show we talked about Andrea. Yeah, Andrea there's Muzzi Andrea Muzi and Andrea Presti. Andrea Muzi took fifth last week or the week before, yeah. whatever. Andrea Presti took fourth, I think. So they're they're worth like top. They they'd be in the front running, right? Yeah, I believe I your front runners are Tim, Vlad, the two Andreas, and William. Yeah. Oh, we got to bet because I disagree with that. Yeah, me too. I like Theo. I I'm saying also. the fuck out of this. You all can kiss me. <laughs> right ass. Oh, I think God. I think oh, no. You ain't dragging me into this shithole. I ain't going down this rabbit hole with you. I'll mute this whole fucking thing. I'm going to go fucking to take a piss. I ain't dealing with okay, this. Okay, wait, wait, wait. i got to look this person up. So I forget what Tim Buddha's eye is. Tim's placed top three at shows before. He placed top three at Cali a couple years ago. Oh, yeah? I'm not sure who this guy is. Let me see. Let me find him. Tim Budesheim. He looks really good right now. He's in crazy good shape. There he is. Okay. Let's take a look. Yeah, he does look good. See, look at that most muscular. That's recent. No, like down. Like, don't look at this. Yeah, there. Oh, rock. See, Isn't that, uh, what's, what's that guy's name? I forget that guy's name. What's that guy's name? David Hoffman? Yeah, that's right. He looks good, too. Can you uh, make that bigger? No, I can't. I know. I know. Some of the comment section is going to be like control plus whatever the fuck. It doesn't work. I can't get it to work. Stop. Tim's good, man. Do, do, if you go down, you'll find pictures from when he did Cali. He always in, in good condition. He's got a really like good dense look. I, I really like him. So you think this is the the, the winner? Uh, I don't know if he'll be the winner, but I that's from when he was an amateur. But yeah, I can. I know that. <laughs> I can tell. There's Cali. He's oh, he good. Looks good. Okay. He looks yeah, good. He looks good there. Yeah. Huh. Hey, he looks good. Yeah, yeah, I really liked him. He was a good amateur too. Off season, obviously. Yeah. Uh, let's see if there's any more stage. You see his back, Fuad. You let's go see. back and see his back last, bread. Sure. Where is it? Up, up there, top left, right there. That's off season. Looks like this. It's hard to tell from off season. Yeah, I know. I just want to see really, how wide his left. Can't really see how much is what's under the fat. I mean, he's got great structure. He's mm -hmm. very, very balanced everywhere. And that's his manager. Mm -hmm. um, okay, I got a good idea who it is. So I think him and that, uh, the um, where's his name? Uh, Vlad, sir, the guy from Ukraine, number 11. I think. Oh, that's yeah, your, he's good. He's good, too, yeah. I think that's your top two. Uh, you got pictures of him? Vladislav. Vlad. No, just type in Vlad. He doesn't have the whole thing, I don't think. This guy. Uh, yeah, sure. That's it. Sure. Yeah, I feel like his his oh yeah kind of, kind of got a long torso is what throws me off about. Yeah, but this guy's covered in muscle, man. Like he looks at that show that he did uh Romania against Regan. Like I arg arguably think he beat Regan there. I think he was really good. This guy's got a lot of muscle, comes in good shape. He doesn't really have any weak points, like he's dense everywhere, back's good, legs are good. Yeah, yeah he's good. good. Yeah, yeah. I think that's probably your top two. And then I think followed by that, then you have like Theo and the two Andreas. Well, you seem pretty certain about yourself. Yeah. I'm not too familiar with these last two guys. This guy looks pretty wild, man. Yeah. yeah. 
Vlad, Vlad, that guy's really hey, good. Did, did, this guy, I, did he? Did I see hashtag two twelve? Is he a two twelve guy? No, no he's big. <laughs> he's a, I, he I, a wait, wait. I just saw two twelve somewhere. He's like two ninety or something like that. Yeah, he's big, man. Yeah. They didn't tell, didn't somebody else not see two twelve? No. no. I, I thought I swore I saw hashtag two twelve. Like this guy's a monster. Maybe just hashtagging it because it's a bodybuilding. Maybe hashtag. this is when he was two twelve. No, he says he was 95 kg there, which is still over 212, isn't it? Uh, yeah. uh, close. 209. 209. Whoa, look at the fucking rain man over here. I'm good with math. <laughs> you can't, you can't, turn, math, your, you can't turn your fucking math. headphones on, but you can. No, but I can do math equations quickly. <laughs> like, go down one. Look at that front relax below it. Like, even that front relax is nice, man. Like, where is that? Right there, right side, top. Top right. Oh, this That's one. Left. Good man, he's good. Mm -hmm. Deep abs, good chest, huge lats, big arms, good legs. Oh, there's the pictures from uh, Romania there, right below it. One second. Theo's good too. Yeah. I just don't think Theo has the same density and muscle to stand next to Vlad. Yeah. I think he's deceivingly big. I, I think he's structurally bigger, yes, but I yeah. don't think he's as muscled. But I mean, he certainly could be in it. But I, I know Vlad will be in good shape, so it really depends. Yeah, you know? yeah. I'm a fan of, of uh, Theo's shape. Yeah, me yeah. too. I, I know. His, I think his back, from what I remember him looking like last year, his back was, you know, need a little bit improving. But other than that, I like his shape a lot. Sergio Lima's a uh, not looks pretty not good. A lot, not big enough. I don't think. I think Who's he was guy? a twelve guy. Let's see. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's a, Okay, name? so William Martins we saw last week yeah. before. Uh, who's Christian Wolski? Anybody know? No. No. Let's take a look. This is the reason why I'm staying out of this because I don't know. Oh, he looks not. good. This guy looks good. I remember seeing this guy. Not bad. He's a little on the small side. Foot? He's yeah. a little smaller, but he's got good shape, man. He's got good – everything's yeah. – that's, that's yeah. a good physique. It's a decent physique for sure. Yeah. It need, does need to be a little thicker to stand with some of those other guys. Yeah, go back to the list. Sorry, I, a name popped out of me and then I lost it. I... Yeah. Adolf Burkhart. Oh, Adolf, that's who it is. Yeah, he's the German guy. He's uh, You'll recognize him if you look at him. He's, he's pretty good. I mean, his midsection's not amazing, but he's got some good muscle on him. He's in decent shape right now, I think. Just one sec. I want to see this. This guy's got good good physique. His conditioning's really good, too. His this weight... is a German guy? No, no this is uh, Wolski. He's Polish. Oh. Yeah, I think you're right. He's just a little bit – he's given up a little bit of muscle. Yeah, he looks like he's only, like, high 220s. He has, like, a very streamlined, like, classic physique. That's for yeah. He's got a very nice physique. Yeah. Yeah, it just needs to be thicker to stand with some of those boys. Um, Adolf. Yeah. Burkhard. He just posted Burkhard. pictures today. Yeah, there you go. He's decent. Good. I, I feel like he's got the same thing as, like – the William, long William Martins and the guy we just looked at. Uh, yeah, European thing. Eh? They have very similar midsections in these. Vlad, Vladislav, uh, yeah. William Martins, and this Adolf. They all kind of have that similar shape. He's got a really pretty back double, though. Look at that back double. Yeah, it's crazy. What do you Good. mean, for Like a little blockier from the front? It's not blocky. They just kind of have a longer torso, and the lower abdomen sticks out a little bit. It's just That's kind like of like a slightly oh, protruding yeah. lower abdomen. Yeah. Yeah, but but they all have a ton of muscle too. It's like they have great legs. Yeah, they, always have good legs. Yeah. They, I mean, look at it's everywhere. He's fully muscled everywhere. Shoulders, arms, his front, chest. His front lat and his back double are very impressive. Look, every every muscle is fully developed. He looks great everywhere. No weak points. But then what throws me off is that just the shape of the torso. Yeah. Torso looks long, so it makes the Guys like this, a tip for guys like this, if when you wear your trunks, make sure you keep the sides of your trunks relatively high. Like you don't want them being flat at yeah. all. You really want to have them accentuate up the lines of your body. It'll shorten your torso a bit. Agreed. Yeah. yeah. Um, there's side chest, side try. Yeah, he's got a ton it's of muscle. Those guys that have those long, chunky abs. Well, he's, he's big too, I think. Like, does it say his weight in the first pictures there? Okay. 127.6 kilograms is 260, 70 pounds almost. Yeah, so I think he's like well over 250 on stage. You think he's tall? No, he's not tall. No, I don't think so. There's videos of him guest posing with Rami, and he like looks decent size. Like, look, look at this shit. This is crazy. He's got oh, that looks good there. Yeah, shoulders are nuts. See, this is yeah. why I wonder. Okay, so can I just say something for people listening? So, 
when you see this, you see this front double, you can see he's crunching down on his stomach and now everything looks perfectly proportioned. You called it a front double, but yeah. Uh, sorry, this front, this this crab shot, whatever you want to call it. Most muscular, yeah. Hands Most muscular, I, hands on hips, fine. Well, what I'm trying to point out though is that he's crunching forward onto his abs is making his torso look shorter. Yeah. But these same guys, I feel like when he does his front relaxed, for example, he's, so he, he's elongating his stomach to make it maybe look smaller. And they kind of pull their shoulders back. Yeah, and it's I think it's doing him a disservice. But I don't think it's helping him. I think if he I don't think so either. I think, think if he's he, better flexing his abs on the front relaxed. Well, just look at this. Just look at this most muscular here, and then look at this elongated torso. You can see yeah, that yeah. if he crunched down, it would look more balanced. More yeah. yeah, I agree. I agree. It reminds me of Hassan Mustafa, the way he poses a little bit that front relaxed. Yeah, I just feel like they're they're I know why they're elongating the torso because I did that too. Like when your obliques get a little bit bigger, you want to elongate the torso to make oh, your yeah. waist look narrower. But and if that, it's that but if it's, there. bottom left, this one? Up one. No, that's your right side. You you got left and right backwards. Up one. <laughs> down, down one. There. Last yeah. fucking throw up. Did you see somebody's draw. Are you drunk, Fuad? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it's good though. That's big. Yeah. That's big. Yeah. He's good. I think he's good. Yeah, so, but, good like, this is a, a good like European throwdown here. I kind of like this. But it's like, yeah, that's what I mean about the lineup is made, there's no big North American names, but these guys are all very even. Yeah. This is gonna be yeah. a hard one. This is gonna be a hard one to chew. Do you guys want to bet on something or what? I, I mean, I'll bet like on the winner. No, well, on the winner. We can, or what the, with? we can <laughs> Paul's all Paul's ready. He's like, nah. Paul wants to Paul's dying to make me grow my hair out. <laughs> oh yeah, I'll I see <laughs> Top five. I can't wait to hear this fucking nightmare of a bet. I think Some, we should not. This should be nipple ring status. Nipple ring. Nipple <laughs> ring across the board for everybody. I'll, since I'm out of the bet, it's a nipple ring. No. No, you got to get dragged into No it. nose ring. That's no. a little ridiculous. It could be, be a It could be a, it could be a, a stud. Little, it could be a stud. You can't get away from it. That's right. No, no you got to be able to hide. No, nipple ring, and then you have to be on the – Podcast with the nip with your shirt off for the entire podcast. You have to wear a tank top that shows your nipples. You have to have a tight, tight shirt on so you see the barbell. <laughs> I'll do I, if, if I knew some of these guys, I would join in on this bet because I wouldn't. I would no, that's why it's more fun because we don't really know who they like. We know them kind no, of. No, you guys. No, Ian was sitting around. Oh, no, that guy's good. No, that guy's going to be Tim's going to be the. Nah, I'm not playing this. <laughs> I know that you do, but me and Fu, I didn't. Don't try to suck me into losing a bet on my nipple. I don't think Ian is any more (laughs) versed than we are. We've all looked at the pictures. We know what they look like. Come on, guy. Don't be a pussy. Um, No, I'm going to call straight vagina on this one. I hope we do top three. That way it's not as. Top you know, five, top five, and the closest top one. Five. Closest I one the top five. My fucking nipple beer. All right, here, I'll make you a deal. I'll do it. If I lose, I'm not getting my nipple beer until after my show. No, I'm not pissing. You got to go on stage. You got to go on stage. My, yeah, no, it's not happening. <laughs> I'm not going on stage with a nipple ring, and I'm not going on stage with a crusty nipple. Hey, are you doing Texas too, guy? Not if I win, but. But maybe. But thanks for the fucking. No, because Ian I'm, might win Tampa, but he's still doing Texas. No, if I win, I'm not. No, if I win, I'm done. Okay, because I'm going to be if in. I'm win, going, I'll be in Texas. Well, no, because I'm going down for Gasp on the ninth. I would just like to tell the audience that since I've been on this podcast, the past like 15 places I was supposed to go, you said you were going to be at, <laughs> and I haven't seen you anywhere. So, so I, mean, I don't know what airline you fucking fly with, <laughs> but you haven't been anywhere. I've been to all of them. I've just been avoiding you. I'm like, oh, oh nice. <laughs> no, uh, no, 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 no. Texas during the show? Yeah, because I know you guys are doing it. So, a uh, guy, Gasp asked me to come down to shoot some content. I so the week of the th- that the can the I just of- finish the fucking my se- yeah, sentence? I what we want to say. I'm going to say. <laughs> the week of the show. Yes, what the week want? of the show. I'll get to the point. The week of the show. I'm going to be, I want to be, because they asked me to come down and I said, I'll, I want to fly home Friday. And then Ben called me. He's like, I'm doing Texas. He's doing the, the amateur yeah. version of it. Yeah. And then I remembered fucking Ian's doing it. And then they said, and then I'm like, guy might be doing it too. If he doesn't win Tampa. And even if you don't win Tampa, you're probably going to go down for gasp also. Yeah. So I said, I said, yeah, fly me down, but keep me till Sunday. Oh, so, when's this? Uh, August, August 9th, August 9th through the, 16th or whatever yeah i could come
you just invited yourself. Well, I was thinking you'd ask me anyway. <laughs> I was gonna ask. I was gonna ask you actually, Paul. No, um, <laughs> yeah, we're all gonna invite you anyway. No, but um, okay. Yeah, no, you. I asked them to get us a, uh, what's it called, an Airbnb, so we get all uh-huh. kind of, we all kind of stay together. Hmm. We need to figure this out now. So we were talking about something, and uh, is envy or jealousy good or bad? Which one is the good one and which one is the bad one? I just, I just googled it here. Where's guy? You gotta take a shit. It's contented. So. <laughs> okay, so yeah, envy is most often used to refer to a covetous feeling towards another person's attributes, possessions, or status in life. Um, jealousy means an unpleasant suspicion or apprehension of rivalship. So yes. Okay, so jealousy is a negative one. Yes. Yeah, I mean, they both have a slightly negative connotation, but envy is the is the one like that would be more makes sense. Yeah, is there? A I would admire. <laughs> yeah, admiration, but it's like it's yeah. not uh, ad- admiration. Yeah, admiration is too light. Yeah, it's a, it, it's a little envious for sure. There's yeah. no because env- I still think envious is a negative connotation to it, and there's literally no. When I see somebody doing really really well, I don't get there's no negative feeling. I just feel like, what can I do in my life to be better to get there. Mm-hmm. See, that's kind of admiring, I think. It is admiring. It's also, uh, it's admiring, but admiring is more like, oh, that's nice, but you don't really have any personal feelings about it. Yeah. Like if I'm admiring you for your glasses, I'm just like, oh, Paul's glasses are really nice, but I don't want to go buy a pair. Yeah. Right. No. But if you, but if let's say you made a million dollars tomorrow, I'd be like, how did Paul make a million dollars? I want to figure out how to make a million dollars. But it's not because there's any negativity. I just want to figure out how I can be as good. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. So I don't know okay. what that I don't know what that I don't know what that word would be. I don't know. Admire. If you guys are watching in the comment section, comment below what what that would be. If you're if you see somebody doing really well, you have zero negative feelings about it, but you would like to be in that position. Maybe guy knows. Guy, can you answer the question? Uh, go ahead. So if if you see somebody doing really well, and you want to do as well as far as like. Anything. Let's say they make a ton of money or they have a beautiful home or they have a really good marriage or whatever you see, right? And you want it, but you're not jealous in a negative way. There's no one? negative connotation to it, but you want to be like that person or have those things or have that lifestyle. Okay. Is it, is it, Cause we were trying to decide if it's envy or jealousy, but those are both kind of negative words. That's, and that's, and jealousy is when you want what somebody has and think ill of them for having it. Okay. And the other, uh, what you and, said envy, envy like envy is being you know envy envious of somebody being like that's awesome i'm fucking envious of you because i wish that was me and i'm proud of you for it so there's jealousy no neg- like je- je- jealousy is like like man that motherfucker has all that shit like that guy's a scumbag why the fuck does he have that i should have that like he doesn't deserve that like that's jealousy. Jealousy. So I'm better than him. He should have that. so you're saying envy has no negative connotation to it i don't think i have told people I'm like, dude, I'm envious of you because you have a fucking wife and two kids and I, I want to have kids and a wife. Like, I, I'm fucking, I would love to have that. Paul, I don't think envious is a bad word. Paul, guy's envious of you. I know. I just thought, <laughs> I just picked that up myself, Red. Sorry, Ian, go ahead. The delivery and intent, I think, makes it a lot different, you know? Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, even if I say something like, oh, I'm so jealous of you, it's like, I don't necessarily mean that in a negative way. Ready? Yeah. I yeah. Got in this sport, and I say this sport, and people always go, why do you guys always say bodybuilding? Well, unfortunately, when you're a professional bodybuilder, everything that you give an analogy to in life or try to explain to somebody in some way, shape, or form is going to be in something that you are well-versed in, which is bodybuilding, right? Yeah. So, like, I have had friends – when I was an amateur, I trained with people that stopped talking to me oh, after I turned pro because they attempted to turn pro the year after me and got their ass kicked. Instead of being like, man, I fucking tried to do what you did, man. I, I wanted to be pro so bad. I fucking got my ass kicked, bro. Fuck, good for you. I wish I could have done it, man. That's different than being like, fuck you. I think I'm better than you. You shouldn't be pro. I should be pro. Jealousy, envious. You know what, guy? Yeah. Paul did that to me. I did not. When I turned, I, I when, I turned pro, when I turned pro, when I turned pro, he stopped talking to me. Podcast. Whatever. 
<laughs> the reason I don't believe it. He drove to Montreal to help me get the pro card. He was like, you don't see this fucking Silvio Samuel physique and you want to... That's right. Well, he sabotaged me when it was my turn. He left me hanging. Left I me sabotaged you. Pancake. Fuck you, man. Your pictures look great. He thought you looked like Silvio Samuel. That was my preference. I know. And I, that's still one of the nicest things I've ever said to me, guy. But there's uh, zero, zero, re- zero resemblance. I, I don't look anything like Samuel. <laughs> Dude, I, I know that. I uh, almost there's not one body part I have that looks like his. Speaking of filling out, I had a meal this morning, and I was gonna fucking be like, you know what, Fuad, you've canceled on me three times this week because last night I, I canceled was, once, and it wasn't my fault. Ian was tired. I got to eat a big breakfast this, this morning, so I fucking went to the diner before I came here, and I had fucking French toast. Uh, cheese i'm like yeah i'm dieting but i'm fucking i'm doing things a little different and aren't i'm actually you, doing cardio i'm eating more aren't you dieting really? yes I don't know, you, so you go to buffets are you trying to no, i didn't go to a buffet you better not shit not- you better not shit the bed again <laughs> <laughs> i'm so happy i don't compete anymore you guys would fucking roast the fuck out of me if i was competing. <laughs> let me tell you something guy you know i love uh, you i was gonna say, can, can you guys see, can you see this or no you really. needed to eat, man. I can't wait to see what you look like yeah. when you come back. You're going to shut everybody up. Um, it's, it's what? It's what? It's cr- It's just fucking. It, it's. I never realized how much fucking. Everybody was talking about how dramatically different you can change from diuretics. And I literally never fucking really saw it. Oh I'm God. 39 years old. I can, I can honestly say as a fucking honest pro bodybuilder, I never noticed it so much until that day. The, until I actually saw it. Like, I don't know if it was because it was so dramatic, but I was like, man, now I, can, now I finally know what being completely fucking flat feels like. No, I think it's because, because I never really knew what it could like being that flat felt like. And I, now I know what it feels like. But it's like we there talked about. It's like we talked about guys because you're a little bit older. Because you guys, if you guys remember Ian, I'm sure you probably recognize this. And guy, you did too. Paul, I'm sure you've seen me look like this. I don't know about yourself, but um, well, like too flat. <laughs> no, but there was you know, actually some, one show I did. No, but you, you know sometimes. No, but what I was gonna say is you know sometimes you get really really flat and you'll post yeah. a picture and you'll say I'm really flat and people will be like you don't look flat at all. Yeah. You can feel it, but it doesn't really show in your body. But it could be because you're yeah. younger and your muscle still looks healthy. Yeah. But, at, but at 38 years old, it's almost like you have to bang it. Like it has to be bang on perfect. Yes. So as soon as you fuck up a little bit, it looks way worse. 2% off looks at, at, at 38, 39, 2% off looks like you're fucking 30% off. Yeah. And yeah. You can't, you can't fill up. 26, 27, you could still pull off a W if you're a little off. At 30, yeah. dude, I, I literally, the crazy part was I was actually peeled out of my mind, but I was so fucking flat. Yeah, that I look actually like looked like a water buffalo. Yeah. And I didn't have any water on me, which is, that's where people get confused. They're like, oh, guy was so off. He wasn't even peeled. I'm like, no, it was the opposite. I was so fucking peeled, but I had no glycogen in my muscle oh. pushing the fucking muscle through the skin. Well, this was like yeah. me at Tampa last I year. I was just going to say, it's, I yeah. Getting, people will say, because like, oh, his glutes were soggy and he wasn't in shape. I was like, I was actually in ridiculously good shape, but then right. I was so flat that it was just zero pop whatsoever and it just yeah. lost look completely you know? that's why yeah. i did the this whole like- that's why i did the whole balloon expanding thing last time we talked about it because yeah. people uh, people should understand the sogginess of the muscle is not necessarily yeah. a conditioning thing yeah that's a good way to put it with the air in a balloon um, um and there's nothing you can do to offset that once the directs are kicking in I and i'm like well no you can-, you can but what i realized is when you're that far gone from diuretics it literally took me almost a full fuck i don't know about ian it took me a full fucking almost 48 hours for my weight to actually catch, hold, and fill out because I ate the night after the show and the next day, and my weight was not holding. And I, I yeah. was still flat until it was like the middle of the, middle of the third day really? where I was like, I'm actually fucking looking like I should have, you yeah. know? I've had that happen yeah. too. That's yeah. not something I don't think you – I think when you're that flat, I don't think it's a, something you can fix in a couple meals. Dude, they strong know. diuretics too. No, it was diazinaldactone. Oh, so those are potassium sparring too, right? So they shouldn't flatten you out that much. Well, one of them is. Well, Dacto, oh, Dacto. oh, is it okay? Yeah, it's it's, it's potassium sparring. Well, well, he, he, he was. Well, I shouldn't say anymore. There was there was one that he was going to take that was a lot harder that he didn't take. Okay. Yeah, Thankfully, you, I didn't. I didn't need anything. Look at, dog, look at your dog down, just staring at the screen. Oh. <laughs> He's like, I want, wants to be part of the podcast. 
Are you my pretty girl? Come here. Um, yeah, no, it's uh, it's a really fucked up thing. But you're gonna, I think you're gonna look a lot different this time around. You need to, to change things up. I'm just people are things saying I should retire. I'm like, you know, 39. I just I know I can look better than I did at my last show, and better than I did when I won Niagara. So I'm like, if that's the case. And I know I can be better than I was at 37 and 38. Then I, I, that's what I want to do. And wherever fucking, wherever the fucking chips fall, they fall. Where would you mm -hmm. have to, where would you have to place? And I'm not implying anything, guy. I'm just curious. Where would you have to place before you did to say, you did say I retire? Like, would you have to like look great and still not place well? And then you're like, I'm done. Or is it an age thing? Or is it just how you feel? Or what is it that you is going to decide the factor for you? Be the deciding factor. If I look not the way I want, the way I know I can yeah. at 39, because I, I have, listen, I know there's a vision in my head of when I was 30, what I yeah. looked like and what I'm going to look like at 39. And I'm not a delusional motherfucker. No matter what anybody says, I know, I know that the 39 year old version of me is not going to be the fucking 30 year old version. Yeah, of of me. I know that, of course. but I still have right here in my head, a version of me at 39 that I think I need, I want to look like, and that I can accomplish. And I'm not going to fucking stop until I do it because I was fucking right there. And I, it, it fell through the cracks again. So if I nail the way I know I can look and I get blown out of the fucking water, cause listen, I took 10th at the Olympia and I was I, like, I was flat as shit at the Olympia. That's so the Olympia. That's the Olympia. So leave that one out. No, what I'm, what I'm saying, if I looked my last three showings, I felt i have been very flat. So if I bring the package that I know I can, which is full and peeled, and I get my ass kicked, there's nothing left for me to do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But if I still am knocking at the fucking door, yeah, then I'll give it another fucking you know year or two. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. it depends on how the training goes, the injuries go, and how my butt. It's uh, unfortunately there's some guys where like Dexter, Sean the time doesn't really fucking yeah. like catch up to them the way it does. Some people time because of what I do and, and sports that I played and things that I've done and extremes I endured injuries. So my father time wasn't on my side in bodybuilding. So I just got to kind of be realistic with myself. So hmm. do I think this is going to be my last show? No, I don't. I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to look really good. And I think I'm going to look the best I have in a long time. And I think, that's going to be a positive for me because I think a in the recent years, I've been judged a lot on how I used to look based on how I looked. And I think now they're expecting, oh, he hasn't looked good this fucking yeah, many yeah. times. And I think if I actually look good, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a positive for me. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. So nipple rings all around? Sure. I didn't agree to that. <laughs> well, I'll, do, you... I'll do a nose if people think that's worse. We have to sit here like this. You guys are young. I'm 50. I can't okay. be doing nose rings and stuff. Yeah, I'm down for it. I can't, I might Paul can't go to work I've with had my nose pierced before. Yeah, I can't go to work with Paul a nose Paul can't go to work with a nose ring. I'm going to get nipple rings and I'm going to do this whole podcast. All right, guys. I'm going to take a minute to let you guys know what's in the Lawnmower 4.0 performance package, okay? In the performance package, you get the Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer, weed whacker, ear and nose hair trimmer, the Crop Reserver ball deodorant, Crop Reviver toner, performance boxer briefs, and a travel bag to hold all your goods. The trimmer is the fourth generation featuring cutting edge ceramic blades to reduce grooming accidents thanks to their advanced skin safe technology. The lawnmower 4.0 is waterproof too. You can use it in the shower. Make sure you got easy cleanup. Use Manscaped's liquid formulas before heading out to make sure your balls smell good. Use the crop preserver ball deodorant to keep you on your game in the heat. Manscaped even threw in Two free gifts with their performance package, the Manscaped Boxers and the Shed Travel Bag. Guys, get 20% off and free shipping with code RBP at manscaped.com. That's 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com using code RBP. Like this. That's like, you just got to cut. Yeah. Yeah, that would be disgusting. I wouldn't I would want you to do that either. I'm going to do like this with my nipple rings. That's gross. <laughs> Hey, well, it's making me nauseous. You got to just cut holes just around the nipples in your shirt. Just... <laughs> <laughs> just like, just like this. Yeah. Like this. Okay, listen. So we're doing nipple. Are we doing nipple rings? Sure. Yes. Fuck. Yes. 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 Paul. What's the other options? Paul, you're on the Paul. podcast. You know what the other option is? Yours are great. You no, here, here. Re wait. Best idea. Kids, 
Hold on. Best idea ever. Do you ever watch the Impractical Jokers? Uh, yeah, I think so. Okay. We make bets. You don't follow through. You're off the fucking podcast, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> don't do that to Paul. He loves it. I do. Um, okay. But there's no other option. That's my only option. No. Ring or nothing. I think it's going to be hilarious. Fun. Listen to this. Paul goes swimming with his kids. I think it's going to be hilarious. Yeah. He takes off his shirt to go swimming, and his kids are like, uh, Daddy, why do you have a nipple ring? <laughs> they're, try- they're trying to play Uncle, with him. Uncle, Uncle, uh, Think yeah. Fuck. All right. How long, how long, how long do I got to keep it for? One month. And what's it got to be? A barbell, a hoop? What's it going to be? Uh, uh, deal with whatever, short, whatever you want. Doesn't matter. You okay. It has to show, though. It can't be like a tiny little stud that nobody can we'll, see. We'll generally, want okay. to pierce, we'll generally want to pierce it with a, with a barbell. A yeah. bar. Yeah. Okay. Let's just say, let's just yeah, say barbell. Be, okay. So one month that we said? Barbell or hoop for one month. Not a hoop. One month. I think it's caught on a fucking string. <laughs> oh, well, my I got a, God. Ian's had them before. You know, this is fine, right, Ian? Doesn't hurt. I don't even know if my nipples can be pierced anymore, so this will be fun if I lose. Mine are going to kill so bad. Oh, mine are oh, so sensitive. Burger tits. But no, I'm, gonna fucking, <laughs> I'm not piercing the fucking side, you idiot. <laughs> I, just needed, I just needed a reason to you say needed a reason to say cheeseburger tits. <laughs> I, just needed a reason. I, I gave that name. My cheeseburgers are going away, brother. I'm down to 274 right now. I'm fucking lean. <laughs> lean and yeah. mean, baby. Lean um, burgers. Texas, Texas, he's going to hop in. He'll be ready. I'm going to jump into there. Texas. <laughs> I'm jump into Texas at 240. Okay. Well, we'll, get, we'll get Guy. Guy will do the open. He'll fucking blow up on breakfast food, and we'll get him in the open. <laughs> breakfast <laughs> food. <laughs> we'll, get, we'll get the three of us. We'll all do Texas open together. You want to do it, Guy? Let's just, have a, let's just have our own fucking show. Just... Of, no, you guys are already there. Who cares? It's well, guy, I can be ready. I can, I can drop 20 pounds and be yeah, ready. Let's do a, let's do a, a bodybuilding podcast too. competition. So let's do it then. What? Texas. What? Together? Yeah. I got I mean, I, I to start doing two-a-day cardios like today. Wait, you want, you want to do the open show? Yeah, yeah do the open. Why, should I lose to you, Ian? Ian, Ian just wants me to do it so he can fucking embarrass me. Ian <laughs> wants to go like this. You want to, Ian wants to do it? Ian wants to go and he wants to do the podcast and be like, I'm the best on the yeah. <laughs> Why don't we do? I've never beat Fuad. Fuad, I have never beat you. So. That's right. I took my ball and what I left. To, wait, what, yeah. happens I, what happens if I actually beat Fuad? You can't beat me. <laughs> Why don't I only have? This? I only have one arm. I can still beat you. Oh, Let's do a I virtual show. This now. What did you say, Paul? Listen, Let's I do a virtual this. contest Listen. and I'll be the judge. Just diet. Yeah. Just diet. I will just stand next to you at a booth in Texas and I'll let okay. fucking motherfuckers judge. Okay, deal. Okay. I'm down for that. <laughs> how are you? How do you think you can beat me? You, you, I outweigh you by 50 pounds. I outclass you, outsash you, no, out you fucking don't. just. Look it. We saw your last performance. Just I'll calm down. Yeah, that was fucking <laughs> like, oh, 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 up and down your ass, bro. All right. I'll get ready. I'll get ready. We'll do me and you will just do our own show. We'll just have a show. Me and you will do a show. We'll pose in your backyard. Just go in your backyard and we'll pose down and Paul will judge. Oh, no, we should just do a live. We should oh, we? do a, Hold on. Us for me, you, and Ian should do a live feed, all yeah. going together, so all our yeah. fans go on it, and then just film it and just have oh, somebody I'm down. With fu- Ian's in his prime. I'm fucking. No, Ian will just have his live feed on. So what's that going to do? Hold, hold the camera and oh, fucking just, film. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right, I'm in. Yeah, we'll do it in Texas. That'll be fine. I'll oh, do it right okay. fucking now. Take your shirt off. No, I'm fat right now. <laughs> I gotta, I gotta lose another thirty pounds. You're a contest shape guy. That's so fair. Yeah, you did a show like last week, you fuck. Yeah, what do you want on his side? Because <laughs> I want it to be a fair Why you on being, his side? Because he's being fair. You're being I'm all about equality here, okay? Yeah, Ian's just being impartial. You're just trying to yeah. cheat. I'm the cheater in this podcast. You did a show a week uh, ago. Uh, You're uh, like, let's let's get on the set and reposted it to win and it tried to get me to lose. That's that was the right thing to do. You should have took that L. We resolved yeah, that. Still fucked up about that. And we resolved that. He's he's like a fucking ex girlfriend. He's like he's still he holding on, still holding on to shit. He like always a, brings up the negative stuff, not the positive stuff. I'm yeah. gonna I'm gonna drink my Paul juice. You what? Is it weed infused? No, same color. <laughs> same color as my skin. <laughs> <laughs> Is that fiber in it? It's, it's some silly musk in there. Okay, some, can we please? Okay, so nipple rings all around. That's what we're doing. Yep. Okay. Jesus. All right, okay. let's go. So what are you, top five? Top five. Ian, you I'm start. Okay, I'm going to go Vlad, Vladislav first. Vlad. Tim Budesheim second. Tim. Andre Mutsi third. Mutsi. Andre Presti fourth. Presti. 
and William Martin's fifth. Martin. Ah. No, no yes. Theo. Stop it, Paul. Let's fucking help him. Okay. Yeah, stick him with that. I think okay. Theo could be, uh, be that fifth place, but I, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna stick with my instincts here. Okay. Okay. Go ahead, I'm Paul. I'm confident in my other four. So. Oh. I'm gonna go Vlad first. <laughs> um. I like. I'm gonna go Theo. Second. Uh, no, no, no. Sorry, the Italian guy, uh, Prezi. What's his last? Is it Prezi's last name? Presti. Oh, yeah. yeah. Him second. Theo third. Um, William Martin's fourth, and uh, the other Italian fifth. <laughs> <laughs> the other Italian. Muzi. <laughs> Muzi. And that other fucking Ginzo. <laughs> <laughs> The other fucking wop. Go okay, guy, guy, go ahead. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. I'm going after you. No, I know you're not. You're next. Oh, yes, I am, because I don't know any of these guys. That's your next. I, I, got, don't I got fucking, I said no to this bet, and then I agreed. So I'm, I literally am guessing. I don't know any of these guys. I'm listening to you guys and then ordering, like, I, like a Cheesecake Factory menu. I don't know what I'm going to order until you ask me. What do you got, a whole cheat day today, guy? No. I mean, no. Just a meal. I already ate it. Cheesecake's on your diet? <laughs> what? Would you just say you're going to order some food from Cheesecake Factory? Paul, you are so on left field, bro. That's not... I said trying to pick this fucking people that I don't know is like ordering last minute at the Cheesecake Factory and glancing at the menu because I don't know what <laughs> Oh, sorry. I thought you said you're, like, you're, you're ordering going to order. Food I'm, sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I thought you said you're going to order. Mootsy's tightened up a lot. Look at him. He's changed a lot since the last show. This is Presti, who looks good. He beat Ian, who? Hold on. I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna. I gotta write this Luchy's down. a lot better than he was. That's why I put him higher. His quad I'm, came in. His conditioning's a lot better. See, like, look at his quads here. He's a lot tighter. Yeah. Then we have Vlad. I mean, and you got Adolf too, man. Adolf's good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, who did who did Ian pick? In I, order, Vlad. No, Tim. don't tell him that. I, I because I want to look at the fucking pictures, bro. I I don't know what you want me to bet on a nipple ring. You're not even giving me leeway here. Okay, fine. Go ahead, Ian. I said Vlad, Tim, Mootsy, Presty, William, Martins, and William, which could be interchanged with Theo or Adolf. <laughs> Pick six then. Nobody has laughed at Adolf once besides me every time somebody says Adolf. I think it's a pretty common name. <laughs> really? Yeah. The All right. So wait, who did, wait, and Paul, who was you? Uh, I went with Vlad first. Okay. Um, Presti second. No, you picked uh, Theo second. Did I or did I pick him third? What do you do, Fuad? Uh, what did I do, Fuad? Paul, you picked uh, Theo third. No, Theo third. And Presti, and Presti second? Yes. So Presti, yeah. Theo, who was fourth? Um, uh, William Martin and fifth okay. was uh, what was his name again? Sorry, the Italian guy, Muzi. 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 Well, All right, you, Fuad. I'm not sure yet. Oh, but you want to force me into this fucking nightmare? I didn't get to analyze any pictures. What do you want to look at? What did I just do? It's too late now. Well, you can go back. It's not it's locked in yet. Really? Yeah, what do you want to look at? I got my phone here. I'll look. Okay, go ahead. <clears throat> Ian's pretty certain about this Vlad guy, but I don't... I know. I don't who, know who, who, uh, Fuad, who are you debating between Vlad and who? I think Presti might win this show. I, I honestly am the most confident in Tim, but I'm... I don't know if he's quite big enough to beat Vlad. I think you guys are sleeping on Tim by far the most here. I think I think Tim is the best in this lineup. Really? Tim, let me let me look at this guy. See, yeah, I gotta see him again. Him. What's his name again, Ian? Tim what? Tim Budesheim. How do you spell that? B U D E S H E I M or something. Oh, I got him. He's big, but he looks like he's like weaker in the. Okay, I got mine. The I got I got mine. Hey, what are you doing? I'm going Presty. Tim, Vlad, Theo, Muzi. 
Good picks. Good. Wait, why did you pick Puka? Presty yeah, first. Paul, yeah. you know we can't see you, right? Oh. Because you're, yeah. you're, you're on your phone. Because you're on your phone. Yeah, sorry, I didn't know that. Presty first. I got Tim okay. second. Vlad third. Theo fourth. Muzi fifth. That's good. So now the rule is in order to win, you have to at least win. Well, you have I think, to at least I get... think I think you should have yeah, to point. win the first one. What do you mean? I think your first place winner should have to be a winner. I think what we should do is just do well, a point system. Yeah. A point system yeah. of whoever gets the most right in the top five and first is worth the most points. I agree. Like three points, first place or no, something like that. Five, five, four, three, two, one. First place is worth five and fifth place is worth one. And just whoever gets the most in those things gets the point. What if you got the top five, but in the wrong order? Uh, oh. That's why I don't think that works. I think we should just say who, whoever is the closest. But how are you going to determine who's closest? Well, once the, the lineup's called, we'll just see who's the closest. Yeah, we'll, we'll decide after the okay. fact what we think is fair. Okay. Is this the Theo guy you're talking about? That's Theo, yes. That's Theo, yeah. But, like, I don't think someone can win if they, like, got first place right and then every other one wrong. But if someone gets all the other four right, but then first place wrong, you know? Yeah. So how many you get That's right? That's why I'm maybe? saying, like, I think it's whoever's the closest, but you have to get first place right. We well, don't have to. It's just, it's advantageous, yes. Oh, you don't, you're saying it doesn't matter. If you pick the first place, I think picking the first place winner is mandatory. Yeah, but what if none of us get first place? Then we all lose. Yeah. No, I don't agree. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> if none of us get first, then it goes to whoever's the closest. Okay, sure. Let me go. Wait, who wait, got wait, second place, right? Between Vlad and Presti, right? Who did I pick between Vlad and Presti? No, he's saying he thinks it's between Vlad and Presti. Oh, oh. yeah. Well, that's who we got so far. I mean, Ian and Paul both have Vlad winning. I have Presti winning. Where did I put? Where did I put Presti, Vlad? Second. Yeah, I think it should be you have to pick the winner to win. And if none of us pick the winner, then whoever's got the closest top five. Oh, I saw this guy. He was in Puerto Rico. This is going to be tough. Vlad and Presti are very similar in physiques. No, Vlad's bigger for sure. No, no, I'm talking about and like they're not like super grainy. They're like kind of bigger structure, but not super fucking like. uh. No, Vlad's big and grainy, man. Vlad's big and grainy, yeah. I don't know because the pictures that I – Presti is Presti is more slim, streamlined physique than Vlad, in my opinion. Am I looking at the wrong Vlad? No, Vlad, this is Vlad. Vladislav. Sir, Sir this, guy's bigger. this guy's bigger than Presti. Yeah, that's what we're saying. He's bigger. Yeah. But I think Presti's got a more streamlined physique, and I think he's going to be better in condition. I don't think he'll be in better condition. I think he has a prettier physique. Uh, but I think in this lineup, I think because you're going to have guys like Adolf, you're going to have William, I think – Vlad is going to be the best of those guys and he'll come out on top. I was the thing I was told Presti Presti's conditioning was way crazier than you could see in photos in real life. Oh, yeah. And I think that's what's going to carry him over. Yeah, but he's got some he's, he still plays lower than most of these guys were picking. So I don't I still don't see him beating them. Presti Italian. But they were also yeah. much, much better. You're talking about Akeem, Hassan, and and no, but he still lost to Mootsy. No, he beat Mootsy. Is yeah, Presti yeah. Italian? Yeah. Yeah, Pre- yeah Presti, Presti was fourth. Mutsu was fifth. He's yeah. Italian, no, Presti. Yes. Yes. Sorry. Go Pre- yeah, All sorry. Right. I'm gonna... Pres- Presti placed the highest. Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to go Presti one, Vlad two. I'm going to go Tim three, Moon, uh, Munzi four, Theo five. Good picks. I Good. think I like guys the best. Yeah, I'm going yeah, so nice to go. end up with a fucking nipple ring in the next week. Who'd you have first, guy? I think I'm going to switch mine to guys. No, you can't switch. Oh, what do you mean no, you can't no, switch? No, 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 no. I just told Paul I can switch. No, no one's yeah, switching the though. same fucking thing. Okay, I don't want to. Just a, <laughs> it's the end. Can I see guys' picks? Because you want to know why? It doesn't matter. You can't he change wants it anyway. I'm just curious. You know no. Because out of everybody on the podcast, as long as he fucking, it's a tie or beats me, he doesn't care about you guys. It's <laughs> always me. Why are you doing <laughs> why, you you why do you think I'm out to get you so bad? I'm not out to get you. I, th- I just said you're the best pick. I go to bed every night 
when this podcast is going to happen, wondering what the fucking ridiculous bet is going to be when I fucking jump on the podcast that day. <laughs> so shut the fuck up where you don't, you don't know. Guy, guy pick Presty first, Vlad second, Tim third, Mootsy fourth, and Theo fifth. Oh, okay. Huh. Only thing I don't agree with is that I don't think you'll get the winner, but I think the rest of us are very, very good. It, yeah. it was a toss up for me. Yeah, I don't think Preston. Man, I gotta get a fucking nipple ring. Oh, it, it, with that fucking size, I think I think I have I think I have the probably the riskiest lineup. You and me do, yeah. Really, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. I just looked at. Pictures. Oh no, wait, guy picked Presty to win. Also, I think me yeah. and guy, me and guy, are running the biggest risk right now. Hang on a second. Let me get this straight. So there's <laughs> one winner. The other three got to get nipple rings. No, the guy with the worst placing has to get in the port. Oh, okay. I've said that it's it's the, the same bet. It would be forever. way it would be way funnier though if only one guy got away and the rest had to get in the port rings. But wait, if we yeah. did it, we would have to film it at the same time. We don't have to go at the same time and film it, and then we can collage our nipple ring process together. Like how miserable in no. like, I think, it, I think it should it's be like the whatever. worst. I think it should be the worst. The worst The yeah. worst picks. So just one person gets, gets it? Okay. it? Yeah, get the nipple ring. All right, let's do, uh, let's do a couple questions, then we'll go. Ian, are you still good, man? You're the one dieting, so we'll run on your time. I can do like you another. motherfucking son of a bitch, really? I mean, guy, you're just coming off a diet, so you feel better now. <laughs> He's in the middle of a... <laughs> you just eat fucking... fucking I had, first of all, I, bet I didn't have one cheat meal that last prep. Not you one. just ate pancakes, and you're fine. <laughs> In order to Cheesecake Factory. You're rejuvenated now. You just had Cheesecake Factory. <laughs> you you cheesecake about that. Factory. That's what Paul said. <laughs> oh, Paul. <laughs> Paul, you look like, like, like I don't even can't even describe you right now. <laughs> All right, let's Undescribable. All right, let's do this. I got another 20 minutes. Okay, good. That's what we got. Uh, would you rather get your eyeball scooped out with a spoon or stabbed with a fork? Ooh. Stab with a stab with a fork. Yeah, <laughs> really? <laughs> oh, no, I don't, I don't think, think so. Hurt to get them scooped out, though. I don't want to get a stab with a fork. You want to get it scooped out? Yeah. When it scoops out, your eyeball is still going to be hanging. Yeah, but, no. I th but I think your eyeball oh, might fork. still work after that. I think if you get stabbed, I think you're donezo. You know? Yeah, you're yeah. fucked. Yeah, so yeah. Stick yeah, fucking... <laughs> yeah, just pop right out. No problem. Yeah. No, I don't think that's the case. You'd rather someone would stick a fork in your face. I think stabbing my eye with a fucking, with, like with a fork, rather than somebody going up under my eyelid around and getting and popping my eyeball out, I think that's way worse. I feel like it would be way less pain with a spoon. I, I feel like the pain would be like squish and done rather than like, I feel like if you flopped oh. it out, you'd be- Yeah, squish and done and then you're blind forever. Like the spoon, you might have some vision left. Your eyeball will be intact. Yeah, they can put your eyeball back in the socket. With a fork, are they stabbing oh, wait, and then pulling are, out? Are you saying that Good both question. ways happen and we can still see? No, because somebody stabs you in the face you with a fucking fork, you're not going to see no, again. You can't so see after that just, guy. This is, so, well, if, if I have a choice between doing something and potentially seeing and doing something and never well, seeing. Well, that was the choice you had at the beginning and you picked the other yeah. one, so you can't go back. Too late. Too late. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, bro, <laughs> I, will I, I was thinking of, of the pain threshold, <laughs> not the actual. The fork would hurt more. You got the stabbing in the eyeball, then yanking it out. Paul, the next time I see you, I'm going to say spoon or fork and whatever you choose. I'm stabbing you right in the fucking face. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be prepared for that guy. I'll be defense for it. It's such a, a, such a, a defense for it. It's such a childish thing. Too late. Too late. You think it. podcast is so babyish. <laughs> no, your picks are in. Your picks are in. Can't change. <laughs> picks are in. Nope, I already wrote it down, guy. <laughs> nope, Ann already said this. Can't change it. All right, listen. It. We'll do a serious one. I know you guys will miss meals, but if you were to say fall asleep before eating your last meal, would you make up for it the next morning uh, or start fresh? Would you make up for it the next day or start fresh in the morning? Start no. fresh. Start fresh. Start fresh. Paul? Depends. It depends. I mean, if I was still competing, like, you know, if I was at the level that you guys are at, I'd probably, because I was getting no light to get pissed, I would eat it then. Yeah, see, but that's not, I would never miss it in the first place, or I'd wake up and I'd eat it in the middle of the night. But we're yeah. saying you fall asleep and wake up in the morning. So, so the next day, are you going to eat seven, are you, you going to eat seven meals, or are you just going to be like, okay, I'm starting over? 
It's new day. Like I fell asleep on the oh. couch and woke up at like 1 30 and ate a meal, but I don't count right. that as the next morning because it's still no, 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 no. This is what we're saying. Your day is done. You fell asleep at fucking midnight or whatever. You woke yeah, up, you have your sixth meal, you fall asleep, wake up at 8 a.m. Yeah, you wake up the next morning, 8 a.m., 9 a.m., whatever. Yeah, I forgot my meal. Oh. Do you do you eat seven meals that day or you just go fuck no. it? I missed it. No, you fuck yeah. it. Yeah. You missed it. Fuck it. Start okay. over. You, you fuck yeah. the dog, make try to get back to schedule. Okay. Yeah. Is it possible to grow on five meals? Yes. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. I just want to I just want to clarify because some people out there are like, I can't get my sixth meal in. What do I do? And I'm like, just add the calories to the other five to the other five meals. Okay. Is it pretty much universal for bodybuilders? Most guys eat six meals a day. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's just like a yeah. Fact. I think yeah. it's just easier it's to it's because it's the eat every two to three hours thing, and when you divide that by how many hours you're awake, it ends up being that. You know. Yeah, it's well, like eighteen I, hours, whatever. And I think it makes the meal small enough to be palatable and not you know fuck you yeah. up for the day. You know what I mean? Because if you try and start doing four meals, now you're eating like eight hundred calories or a thousand calories per meal, and it might be yeah. it's too much to stomach, right? But you know it's crazy. Like even after you, you guys stopped bodybuilding, you know I, I stopped a long time ago. You know I still train with Fu at a high level training with him, but you never get that six meals out of your head. Like there's days when I miss my six meal, and I, it upsets me a little bit. Still, that's just, that's just being a fucking uh, like a programmed human being for loving what like bodybuilding lifestyle. That's all. That I is. did five. Yeah. I did five for a really long time. I do five now. And I talked to Evan. Evan's Evan does five too. It's like it just feels easier because I can take three hours between meals. Yeah, but you try to get six, don't you, Fuad? Sorry, Paul. What did you say, Ian? I said Melissa does four only ever. Does she? Oh, yeah. But she gets all the calories. But she's got a bigger appetite anyway, right? So yeah, she can get. She doesn't, she doesn't need a ton to begin with, but yeah, I mean, she eats four, four and then maybe like a protein ice cream or shake post workout, you know. So let me ask you, Ian, before we move on, if you're eating four meals a day, is there too much time between meals? If you're well, she, a bot for her, it's okay. at like fucking 9 p.m. So, well, yeah, yeah. Oh. So, you're basing it. What if I said to you, I only want to eat, what if I come to you and I'm, you, I want you to coach me and I say, I only want to eat three meals a day, but I can get my 4,000 calories in? I'd be like, how's three meals and two shakes sound? Or three yes, meals yeah, I would, I would say, can you do three meals and two shakes? Yeah. Okay, cool. But why? Just because I think having the large gaps, I think it's not the best. And I think, okay. People, in terms of the digestion, you're going to assimilate it a lot better if it's not in massive quantities. And you're also not going to have massive fucking insulin dumps after your meals and be like, you know. Yeah. Okay. But I mean, hey, if you can eat 2,000 calories, 1,500 calorie meals three times a day in the off season as a bodybuilder and you want to do it, fucking give her, man. I don't give a shit. <laughs> this I don't is, like This, I, this I don't is where I have a problem with. Sorry. Go I, ahead. I Sorry. Go ahead, guy. Like some guys will be like, oh, well, I missed a meal. So I had my meal plus a protein shake. And I'm like, that's good because that protein shake you just drank after eating the meal did nothing besides you're going to shit it out. You yeah. can't add food to like when you're already eating eight, 10 ounces of, of protein and two cups of rice and you want to add a shake or something to do because you missed it. All you're doing is wasting those calories. I don't know though. That's what, that's the dilemma. Uh, yeah. There's no, your body can't, can't digest all that bro at once. So listen, so for the longest time, I was like, you got to have a meal every two, three hours. You got to break up your food this way for performance reasons, for digestive digestion reasons, blah, blah, blah. And then the more scientists, gurus I have on the podcast, the more say it really doesn't fucking matter. As long as you but get, food, the, as long as you get the calories in. Are they talking from a weight loss standpoint or performance? Well, like I was talking to Justin Harris, for example, right? Very smart coach, yeah. you know, been coaching for a long time. He's like, it really doesn't fucking matter. He's like, you need to get your calories in. doesn't matter when you get them in or how you get them in. You get your calories in. I'm, so starting, feels like I'm starting to agree with that more. But I don't, but I've noticed a significant drop in performance. Like if I only, if I ate two meals a day and I, each one was 3000 calories, I don't think my performance would be the same as if I did six meals at a thousand calories each. Right. Like I, I feel that's more of a blood sugar stabilization thing than anything. And I think it also comes down to sodium intake as well. Cause like if you're yeah. eating six meals that you're salting lightly, I think you're always going to have way more sodium in your diet than if you're having one gigantic meal, you're probably going to salt it almost the same as your other meal. You know, are you going to sodium and, and the water balance and electrolyte balance? It's going to make a big difference. But if you can regulate those to be the same, I think it'll almost be the same. In your opinion, are you going to absorb the glycogen the same if you're eating like, let's say you're eating 600 grams of carbs a day, you eat 300 grams twice instead of 
a hundred grams six times. Are you going to still fill up? The I personally don't find I assimilate the same, but I, I don't have the science to back that. See, this is where, this is where I feel like science and theory miss each other because, well, if you, because if you read the science or if you talk to some, a scientist or a guru, of whatever sort, they would say, doesn't matter. It's the yeah. carbs are the carbs, whatever. But in re, in the real world, I'm like, my performance was better. My body looked better. I felt better. X, you know, blah, blah, blah. All these things all were better doing it the bro way, right? Yes, yeah, you're saying you're saying felt better versus and performs better versus in just in street, like what will the outcome yield in terms of weight gain? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get that, but those those factors have to go in, right? Like it's not in a vacuum. We're not we're not building a, a mus building muscle in a vacuum. Like I have to feel good to be able to train well sure. to be able to put the muscle on. That's, that's so. the it's, it's an individual response, you know, like where yeah. some people might not feel that. You might be like, I don't like how I feel. Some might be like, yeah. I feel yeah. great. I feel better. I feel better yeah. when I eat bigger meals. My performance is better. So, you know, if you take a hundred people and it, you know, averages out, I think then when you're saying that it doesn't matter, I think in the long scale of averaging it out, it wouldn't matter a ton, you know? Yeah, yeah. I guess, yeah. But then that's also why the six meals has come because I think most people feel their performance is the best. It's easiest yeah. to eat the meals. Their electrolyte balance is the best. You know, everything is the best that way. You know? So I guess we, what we could say is like technically in a study, in a Petri dish, it doesn't fucking matter. Not a ton. But in, right. in the real world, a acting body. it out, yeah, it's going to be a little different. In the real world, it's it's for some people and do what you find optimizes your performance. Yeah. Okay. Wouldn't there be some benefit? To have like a constant supply of amino acids in your blood all day too, rather than that's some a theory. Spikes. That's yeah, that's, that's also a theory, theory as well. But like, there's also going to be people that like you know, same thing going. Some people that like to train the morning with like no food or one meal in them, and there's some guys that like to train. I only like to train the day when I have five full meals in me. You know, like so. But one second, Ian, because now we're talking about what I like to do, and what I'm saying is, yes, everybody has a preference, but we're saying like to bodybuild properly and most optimally, <laughs> what is the best? I'm not saying those other ways are no good. I'm just saying. No, no, I know. I know what you're most, saying. Yeah, the most we're trying to figure out what the most optimal thing is. If somebody said to me, "Hey, you can eat three times a day, and you're going to grow the same amount as you ate six times a day, and all the other factors are going to be equal," then I would probably eat three times a day. I don't want to eat six times a day. But yeah, I don't. It was going to be so ridiculous. What's up? What the? Who's that ugly fuck? <laughs> Flex, what's up, man? I can't see him, guy. Pull, pull up, go up, uh, go up. Pull up, pull up. I'm trying to watch and see you guys at the same time. <laughs> pull, up, pull, up, pull up, pull up, pull up. <laughs> Don't come. Pull up. Flex, what's going on, man? How are you? Good, good. How are you guys doing? It's good to have you on the podcast finally, even if it's like. Do you have a toupee on? <laughs> no, bro. It's just. It's just <laughs> <my hand. laughs> does this count as? Does this count as a podcast appearance? Again? Does this count as a podcast appearance? We're gonna put your name in the in the title name as Flex uh, as Clickbait now. <laughs> Clickbait. <laughs> Flex, I'm gonna put that Flex Lewis joins the podcast. That's gonna be the title. <laughs> Flex Lewis says he will win the Olympia. We'll do we'll do another one whenever whenever we get well ever you text me back. Oh, here oh, we go. Oh, I told, we go. Oh, I told, I'm, not, I'm not getting in the middle of this fucking domestic. I already tried. I already did. All right. I'll text you. I know you're shooting life, guys. So I obviously didn't expect to jump on how fucking naked you are. I just want to say, since I'm on you, Ian, good luck for the Olympia, mate. Uh, and um, I'm looking forward to seeing you on, mate. For what? We'll circle back. Guy. Thanks for answering the fucking call with me no top on, you prick. <laughs> I'll, call, I'll call you when I get off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fuck you. Um, anyway, I forgot what we were talking about. Flex has me all flustered. Uh, you're welcome. Man, I, gotta, I do a lot of things. Podcast man. What did you? He man, didn't. You didn't do things. anything. It's. I'm not gonna even put that in. The, I, I'm gonna put that. <laughs> I in the love fucking just Flex Lewis. The fucking Flex Lewis joins Bro Chat. No. Um. <laughs> so yeah, we we're talking about meals. I just. I'm always trying to clarify for people because one of the things you know Paul said that's important is. Go ahead. Baby. I've talked to. Uh, you know, Tuttle will be like. There's a pool of amino acids in your body. It doesn't matter when you get the amino acids, right? But then you know, what Paul was saying is also valid, which is 
you need a steady stream of amino acids, which is why we have supplements like essential amino acids and things like that. So you constantly have a steady stream of aminos going through your body. Because you create so, an anabolic environment that way, don't you? But I also think it's it's individual per person because some people like to intermittent fast. Some people have bigger appetites. Some people no, have no, 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 no. But we're not talking about preference of what you want to do. We're talking about what's the most optimal way to build muscle. But you um, the, the, John's got his theory of the importance of his pre and post workout meals. So yeah. that would kind of you know throw that whole theory out the window too. No, it. it doesn't. It doesn't throw your theory out the way. John still has six meals a day. John yeah. still says to do six meals a day. He just thinks your carbs should be centralized around your workout. Right. That's, no, I'm not saying I'm not saying John would be against what, what we're talking about. I'm just saying I'm just saying like John John is agreeing with us. You know, like it is important. Oh yeah, to yeah, yeah. Breakdowns in the frequency. Yeah. Um, three, three biggest carb meals should be breakfast, pre, and post always. Okay, wait a minute. Let's go back to aminos for a second. Ian, what's your thought on aminos having a pool of aminos for your body to draw from versus a steady stream of aminos that we get in throughout the day? Which is I think having a steady stream is better. Yeah. Agreed. Okay. See, that's mm -hmm. the confusing part to me because a, a scientist like would say it's irrelevant. Your body has a pool of aminos to draw from. And then I'm like, but that's not what we've been taught for years or what we practice. Right. So that's where I'm like, people are always like, why don't you follow what are the they comparing? Are they taking it from a bodybuilding standpoint? Science well, is science, but when you add in a lot of other things that we do, they're it taking might be it the fucking variables in the in, in the end result in the theory yeah i think they're normal everyday people don't train as much as we do don't do cardio as much as we do don't take ped so to say science is right it might be right for the general population but it honestly might not be right for bodybuilders but these conversations i've had were based on bodybuilding yeah. like when i'm talking to when i'm talking to um not chris tuttle Justin Harris. Justin Harris. When I'm you talking, know what to I would believe that if, if somebody actually took what you said, put it to theory, and died it down for a show, utilizing that and looking insane yeah. and actually proving a theory worked. The problem is nobody. I've never seen anybody do that. Okay, so this is where I'm getting. This is the point I'm getting to. So we constantly run into people who are like, "Why don't you believe the science? Why don't you believe the science?" And it's like, I want to believe the science. I would love for somebody to say to me, "You can eat all your aminos in one meal and not eat for the rest of the day." Mm -hmm. But no one's ever practiced it and actually mm -hmm. seen any, like, I've never seen anybody at the pro level practice it and have success. There's like, if it it macros. everybody's like, oh, I do. I'm like, yeah, who the fuck? I don't know anybody that competes that does if it fits your macros. Remember so uh, Vic Richards? Yeah. yeah. Remember when he came up those, remember he came up those claims that he used to eat like 30,000 calories a day or something like that when he was in his prime? He claimed that he, he used to claim Twizzlers. he did it in one meal. That's yeah. not impossible. I, I don't think it was true either, but I remember reading the article where he said he'd get it all in one meal. All, Although I did just have, I, I did just have Tom Stoltman on the podcast. He said he eats maintenance calories. He's the world's strongest man. So you guys check out that podcast if you want. It's actually really good. good. Uh, but he said maintenance, he does 8,000 calories a day for maintenance. Yeah, but wow. he's like high 300 pounds. Yeah. He's like 380, but st it's still crazy. You still got a stomach 8,000 <laughs> calories. Like it's yeah. fucking, it's nuts. That's what uh, okay. he needs to get in for whatever. That's his mate. That's his maintenance. Yeah, and then he goes. He said when he gets closer to comp, he goes up to nine and ten. Yeah. Jesus, could you imagine eating ten thousand calories a day? No. Have well, who's that one? Like, have you watched like Brian Shaw's like full days of eating? And he'd be I like, oh, "I'm hungry this morning." I'm like, "How the fuck are you hungry if you ate that yesterday? <laughs> you're fucking lying that you're hungry. You know? <laughs> There's no way you're hungry. You ate that one day. You're not hungry the next day. There's no way." <laughs> yeah. All right. All right what's what's that? We'll do, we'll do, you want to do rate your physique to finish or you want to do a question? We'll do one question, one rate your physique. Sure. All right, let's finish. Let's, let's do a rate your physique. First. Let's do the question first. Uh, what is your proudest accomplishment, bodybuilding or life in general? Mm. Paul? Okay. Or Ian, if Start you want. Yeah, it. Well, I just, he was thinking, so I thought. Maybe, oh, okay. Maybe that one. Okay, life? Life, ahead, or yeah. life or bodybuilding, he says. Well, I'll, do, I'll do one of each. I think mine is kind of all one the same. I think it's the life I've been able to build for myself by bodybuilding, you know, that I've taken something that was like a fun hobby and I've been able to, you know, make myself good money, have a nice home, have a life that I enjoy. Like, you know, it's something you <laughs> travel and do fun stuff together. Um, you know, I think is that there, I've been able to build a life around something like that is very cool. Is there something more specific though? Cause that's like, if somebody said, what's your proudest accomplishment? And I just said bodybuilding. Well, bodybuilding is not because if I just was a, if I bodybuilded and didn't make anything of it, it wouldn't, you know, 
So you're saying the life you've built from bodybuilding? Yeah, the fact that I've been able to make a good living enough to not work any other jobs and completely yeah. support myself from bodybuilding is something I'm, I'm proud of, yeah. Okay. Guy, proudest accomplishment, bodybuilding or life? Ooh. Melissa, proudest accomplishment, bodybuilding or life? Um, I mean, this is so cheese dick, but probably my marriage. That is cheese dick. Now I feel stupid. <laughs> I, <didn't say> <laughs> I was going to say, Ian, you fucked that up. <laughs> You're an awful fuck. Yeah. I, mean, I think my relationship with him is something that like. That's not cheese dick. It's like that. no, that's thoughtful. Ian's just this day, absolutely that's something to hang around on. I think that's awesome. Yeah. Um, I would have to say honestly, um, something I'm really proud of, bro, is honestly my clothing line, because it's like people buy my stuff because it's my stuff, and it's like every time somebody even asks me for a picture to take a picture, I'm still like every time I'm like, why? Is, like, who the fuck am I to be take, taking a picture with? So I'm. Is as much as a maniac as I am on social media and like the way people perceive me, like I'm, I, I see everything that I do. And like the fact that I'm leaving tomorrow at fucking 6 30 in the morning to go to Columbus with Jay and Branch, that there's a big event. Like the fact that I'm able, that people want me at their events because they want to see me. And they, like that's just to me is something that I never thought I would ever experience. So to me, that in itself, being somebody that others look up to or look for to for advice or help or, that's cool to me. That's, that's more of a trophy than the trophy that's put in front of me half the time. Paul. Okay. Uh, I, I have one for each. <laughs> I can't wait for this. Paul's ready I got ready. one for each. Okay. Get ready. Okay. So for life, um, you know, I was going to say marriage too. Melissa stole that from me. I, uh, <laughs> cause I mean, it does make me proud that, you know, someone, who, you know, my wife, you know, she's a pretty established person too. She's, you know, she's not like a bum or anything. So, you know, it makes me proud that, you know, she's she not a bum or my, anything. you know what I'm saying? She's like, she's, you know, she could have had a lot, she could have had any guy, you know, and that makes me feel proud that, you know, we, you know, she chose me as her husband or whatever. Um, being yeah. her father. Well, it's like, it's not my fault. She made a bad deal. Well, she's in it now, guys. I'll take half of everything she leaves. Um, you know, my daughters, take half you know, of everything you know. if she leaves. <laughs> My daughters, you know, becoming a father was, you know, obviously one of the proudest moments of my life. And um, so that's it for life. But for bodybuilding, um, becoming a pro judge, definitely. And uh, I still take pride for it in our shows, you know, because we built them from scratch. You know, like Windsor hadn't had a show in about 10 years. You know, we I remember our first year going door to door to companies, knocking on doors, asking for sponsorship money to help us out. You know, I'm proud that we built that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's been, uh, what, 10 years now? 12 years? Over 11 years this year. Yeah, eleven years we've been doing the shows. And we yeah. got two. We got two of them. So yeah, that's we got two. Yeah, and, and we. And I feel like we raised the bar too. You know, like for a while there, shows were kind of. I agree, definitely. Yeah, yeah like oh, yeah. shows were kind of like being held at high school gyms and stuff like that. And you know, I, I feel like you know we kind of raised the bar a little bit for amateur. Remember shows they remember they stopped us from doing what we were doing because we were giving away like our prizes were too good. So then yeah, other, other shows started giving away even better prizes. Yeah, and yeah, then, and then it became a competition to give who can give the best prizes. So like, fuck it, no more prizes. Everything. And then, like, even like our dessert tables, everyone started copying that, you yeah, know, like stuff yeah. like that. Like, but you know, I, 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 like... I got to confess, though, I stole that from Ed Parizzo. <laughs> well, yeah, Ed we stole one of our ideas. Oh, yeah, the Europas, the fucking. Yeah, because they had the yeah. dessert table. So, what we did was after our shows, if people would walk off stage at the finals and we would have like cookies and donuts and because all this other shit. The Europa shows, yeah, they did this. Yeah, the Europa. Yeah. So, I stole, I stole that from them. But yeah, um, yeah, that's something to be proud of for sure. That's awesome. I'm going to steal that from Paul. I'll take that. Um, I think for me, uh, I, th I think the entire bodybuilding empire, I think the whole thing, like the bodybuilding sh career, the supplement company, the gym, the podcast, the podcast, probably the most, which is really fucking weird. No, because the podcast is kind of your, 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 your flagship of what started everything. You, you know? know why? You know why though? It's the, the career is selfish. The podcast doesn't feel selfish. <laughs> I think it's a different, it's a different, it's a different satisfaction. The career is selfish for from a competitor standpoint, but you don't know the lives you change while like do, doing what you doing, getting ready for a show. So as selfish as being a competitor is to other people, you don't know the lives you're changing. Well, I agree with That's you. What that a lot of people don't understand about the professionals in the sport. And I'm not talking about me, but I know there's guys in the sport that I look up to and that have changed my life. And they might not even know it just because they are who they are. 
No, I agree with that. There's an inspirational side to what we do that we don't intend, but it's there anyway. But what I'm saying is, and I'm sure you guys get these messages too. In 20 years as a bodybuilder, 14 as a pro, I never received the amount of messages I've received since starting the podcast about people with cancer that watch the show to laugh or fucking people that are just down and out and bummed out. And like, I've never received that shit from bodybuilding. Yeah. So I agree. Even for, even for me being part of it has been a big, a big thing. Like, you know, yeah, the amount of, I know the amount we're doing for other people, you know, how much yeah. they enjoy watching it. Like, yeah. you know, you put up an episode, like the second it goes out, my Instagram is tagged with 10 million people. Oh uh, yeah. Pictures yeah. of their computer, watching it. Best part of my day. Like blah, blah, blah. You know, like, yeah, yeah. I get the same and nobody even knows who I am. <laughs> but, they, but they love you the most paul <laughs> i don't know i don't get it but okay <laughs> all right let's uh we'll finish off with a rate your physique and then we'll, we'll be done so ian can go eat uh share screen lion king ks kevin stutz oh, IF- oh he's an IF- wow. he's an IF- like- he's an ifbb pro oh, oh. Why would we- well, what's then- he he's got a 10 as an amateur physique let's start from there <laughs> <laughs> okay one second it says uh Doing my pro debut in two weeks, the Portugal Pro. So this was before, oh, cool. obviously. A week ago, yeah. Okay. Uh, Classic Physique Pro, 6'1". Expected stage weight, 230. Cool. Mm-hmm. Let's see that side chest. That's a fucking yeah. wild. That's yeah, good. Crazy condition. Yeah. Is he classic? Yeah. Yep. It's a Classic Physique Pro. He's got a very nice, like, He's a European look to him, too, you know? He's mm-hmm. very, very romantic, obviously. Hey, you know when I proposed... <laughs> When I proposed to my wife, I didn't get on my knees. Did you guys get on your knees? Like, I don't know, uh, but that motherfucker is definitely tall because if he was actually fucking uh, even on a full knee, he'd be taller than his wife because he's tall. <laughs> yeah, he's yeah. Tall. that's just the yeah. angle. That yeah. motherfucker is tall. Wait a minute. I need to know the answer. Did you guys get on your knees when you proposed to your wife? No. Your wives? I did. Did you? Where were you? In a, a, a fancy a uh, restaurant? Res- yeah. Resort, yeah. And you got really? on your knees in front of everybody? Yeah, yeah. Wow, Ooh, old fashioned. Ian's the man. Paul, did you get any yeah. Fuck no. I I fucked mine up. <laughs> Fuck no. <laughs> I, I, I messed like, mine up. Hey, touch. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah, I messed it up completely. I gotta redo it one day. Uh guy, did you get on your knees? For what, Fuad? That for the you were married. You were married. You were married. You were ex-wife. <laughs> yeah, but you were married, so that means you were pro- at some point. <laughs> At some point, you proposed. I just want to know. Yeah, when you know this. Yes. You I, I went on. I went on. This wife, you should know. I was on a knee. <laughs> you know what? Forget <laughs> it, guy. Not that I need to get on a knee because I'm short enough, but I got on a fucking knee. Guy, forget it. I'll just ask her when we talk. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> he said he did. Did you, Fuad? No, I didn't. No. I fucked it all up. I didn't know it was that important. So you were well, standing. Like, yeah. I'm too, I'm, I'm, no. I, got, I got legs tomorrow. If I squat down, it's going to no, we were <laughs> my leg pump. My my proposal is really cheesy, so I'll just say this: I was sitting, we were sitting in a, a restaurant. I know, I and, did it. and I stayed in my seat. I didn't get out of my seat and get on my knee, which I should have done. I know exactly. But, what, you did. what did you do? Like, be like, hey, I got a question. You want to ask? Tell Paul. Do you know what I? You don't know what I did? Yeah, I do. Tell him. It. Put it in her drink. Put it in her fucking cheeseburger tit. And yeah, put it in her food. Close. Put it in her salad. Her I put it in her salad. <laughs> 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 not the it was still in the box though so she didn't like eat the rate you know what i mean like <laughs> so was the box just covered in one out of everything in your some, some, mind? Some, some, letters, some letters letters covering it yeah uh, <laughs> it's got some caesar dressing on it yeah <laughs> it was a, we we're it was just just an impulsive fucking thing i didn't ian took the time to plan this whole thing and like ready for this here's a story a, for you am i I, I was gonna get engaged in miami the year after I turned pro, me and her went to Miami and I brought the ring with me and I was sitting in the audience because we were going to stay in Miami for a while and we we're going to, I wanted to go out on the beach and we were sitting down watching one of my buddies compete who doesn't talk to me anymore because he didn't turn pro, but I had the fucking ring in a box and I had the box in my cargo shorts in the right side of my pants and I was sitting down and she sat that Bethany comes around and sits down next to me. Cause I was like helping my buddy. So I didn't expect her to come. So she sat next to me and she put her left hand on my thigh and was like, what's that? And I jumped away and I was like, oh, that's just a bottle of Clem that somebody just gave me. And I got up and walked and I was like, there's no way she doesn't know <laughs> that you. that was a fucking yeah. ring. 
You and, bought I was, then I was like panicking on what to do. I'm like, should I do it? Should I not do it? Should I do it? And then I fucking got cold feet and I was like, I'm not going to do it because I think she knows. Hmm. So it was, a bad start. It, was a, it was a bad start from the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. Back to uh, what's this guy's name again? Kevin Stutz. Okay. That's a crazy physique, man. Go ahead, Ian. Nice. Yeah, tiny waist. Uh, yeah, I mean, he's got a little bit of an imbalance between those two quads there, you can see. Oh, yeah. His right one Definition, is yeah. separated, and it looks like he might have some kind of injury in the injury, quad. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, it's a pretty physique. His condition was good. Nice, tight waist. Clean clean look. Everything's very balanced. That side hamstring drops beautiful. Uh, on a pro classic physique, I'll give him like a – Seven three. Yeah, I was around seven. I was around seven. Yeah. Good, the back the the back threw me off a bit. I feel like the back. Needs and to I think he's got a really off. bad. Yeah, legs. I think he's got a really bad torn left pec too. Yeah, I just noticed. Oh, yeah? Here. yeah, right Look here you can see. It. Oh yeah. He hides it well though. Yeah, actually, this one's torn too. Actually, wait, they're both torn. Yeah, I think well, they're both. Hey, he's not going to be hitting most musculars in classic, so it doesn't really matter. But I mean, yeah, true. I think he hides it well. It's fine. Yeah, it's his front good. lat, we couldn't tell. And he's not hitting the front lat anyway. It's just, can you see in his front double? Oh, sorry. Uh, a little bit. I, I think, think his legs I, are a little. I, honestly, Paul, go ahead. You're the judge. Why don't you say? I think his ahead. legs are a little bit. You know, yeah. Need to come up a little bit. Yeah, um, exactly. Back to nice small waist though. Nice structure. I like. I like him from the waist up. Yeah. From the front. Yeah. Um. But yeah, the legs. I think need to come up in the back. Needs to come up a little bit more. But. Uh, but nice physique. What do you think of side leg, Paul? It's good though, right? Side, side leg looks a lot better than the front for sure and back. Yeah. And I didn't like the can I see the back shot again, Fluid? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I think he needs more 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 from the back too on his legs. He, you know, he can also make this a lot better with his posing. Like he's yeah. kind of he's losing a lot sure. off by how he's posing it. Yeah, he's Definitely. trying to pull he's pulling his elbows too far around yeah. for, forward. He needs to drop his elbows down like an inch and a half and back more. Yeah. Yeah. Even though the way he's doing his legs, I Do I go to that front double. Yeah, he definitely tore that left pec because his nipples. Yeah, 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 for yeah. sure. So his right yeah. one's fine, but his left one was definitely torn. Tight yeah. waist, though. Like he's got a great structure. I was, I was in, the, I was in the seven-ish range, like seven or seven point something. Yeah. Like, so yeah, he's, gonna, he's low sevens. Yeah. 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 I'll just say a couple things. So yeah, I agree with Paul. Legs need to come up a bit. Back is to me. Back is the most glaring. Yes. Um, but honestly, I agree with Ian on the posing because even this front double. You can see he's pulling his elbows forward. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They need to go more straight like out. That. And he's doing this front double exactly the same from the back. Like he's still got his elbows forward. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's got to put his elbows so, towards, the, towards the wall. Yeah. Yeah. His yeah. El your elbows should be parallel, like yeah, should run straight straight in line I'm, with your chest. There, yeah. I hate the close feet flared me thing. I do. I hate yeah. that too. Yeah. 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 And uh, yeah, the way he, his back double bicep, you can tell it's, it's throwing his lats off too, the way he's yeah. got his arms like that. Yeah, he's so, losing a little by that. So Kevin, sure. I think I think overall we're all around the seven, seven and a half range, somewhere in there. But more importantly, I think we can you can correct a lot of your issues with posing and then bring up the back and legs a bit. And I think we're you're good. Yeah. He looks like a young guy. Looks like he's got a you know, good future. Okay. Um, all right, cool. boys. We're gonna let these guys go because uh, Guy and Paul or sorry, Guy and uh, <laughs> Guy and, and Ian are dieting. Me and Paul yep. are just fat. I gotta work. You know you got to work? Yeah, I got to work today. Uh, I guess I'm taking the day off from the gym. Uh, I thought we were going to take it off anyways. Yeah, I know. I kind of felt like going. Uh, let me call you then. I got to get ready for a show in three weeks now. <laughs> no, yeah. Four yeah. weeks, four weeks. You got four. <laughs> All right, guys. Hey. Okay, yeah, see, you guys. see you guys. See you, guys. See ya. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, share with your friends, and like the video. And if you get a chance, check out the description for all the different links to all the different places you can find Hostile and myself. And lastly, check out Hostile.com for our new line of supplements and all of our apparel and gear. Thanks again for watching.